Welcome into a Monday edition of the Jordy Colada Show. Just getting started here live on the UDL. Paul Maneri coming up one hour from now. We will talk to the former LSU head baseball coaches. He'll stop in. Great video surfacing yesterday from the uh, LSU baseball Twitter account. We'll ask the former head coach if he gets on Twitter now. Does he now join social media now that he's well, we not the he's head coach? he's been on Tiger Droppings. He, he was on social. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, maybe we go there this morning with the, uh, with the old ball what coach. What do you think his username is? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we will ask him about yesterday. Jay Johnson, of course, being introduced. Not introduced, but he's today at 445. He'll be introduced officially to the LSU media and supporters coming up at the uh, the facility. His wife looks uh, like Compliance officer at the University of Nevada. What? Well, we need some help in compliance. We wow. need some like, serious, serious help. That worked. In compliance. Maybe this is a little two-for-one play by Scott Woodward, the genius. <laughs> uh, as uh, Woody making... That making was the smokescreen, dude. Yeah. Things like, let me figure out this compliance department really making quick. Making deals behind the scenes. Um, asked a, a lot of times over the weekend. Was out and about this weekend. Was at a wedding on Friday, on Saturday. A lot of people wanting to know the opinion on Jay Johnson. And as I told everybody, I'm just trusting Scott Woodward on this. I'm just riding with Scott Woodward, man. If he thinks that this is the best guy for the job right now, I'm just going to ride with Woody as he thinks Jay Johnson is it. He'll introduce him today at 445, so we will uh, we will be there. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Stick around. Bro. Noah, what do you got going on Social today? media update. Social media Driven update. Driven from Alexandria this morning. I woke up at 2 a.m. Um, well, I could go. Possibly. Stick around, maybe, oh, yeah. maybe, 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 maybe. I can go. Um, and uh, dropped her oldest off at uh, at summer camp, she's which is middle, two weeks. Yeah. Your, two weeks. No, no, no. That's your old. Okay, but well, she's step. my only. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry. But then I have two steps. But yeah, um, dropped her off at Camp Highlander. Two weeks. Cried. Golly, bro. I could never do the two week away oh, from home. I could not either. I did one week and I cried every night. Oh, as a kid, I used oh. to freak out. Freak yes. out. Not like freak out. Until Little, until like middle school, I couldn't. Yeah. Wait, Jay, wait, wait, wait. Could you not stay the night at somebody's house? I could, could not. You, you you would, I, you would, I could see you I piecing. I could I see you. Like, I'd freak out. Yeah, I could see you like 2 a.m. being like, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. 2 a.m. I call my dad. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was almost, it, it almost oh, got wait. to a point where it was like, I was expecting this. <laughs> yeah. He'd like be rolling. It was hard. It was so hard. hard. And I'm, I'm freaking out because little Jay's about to go to a a week long basketball camp. Sleep away. I mean, he's going to have to. It's 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 away from, he's, I mean, we're dropping him off, bro. Uh, is he like hard. you in that regard? Do you think a little bit? But can you know he what I mean? talk to you? Like he, he can talk. That's he'll be, he'll be able to. I just have issue. to look that's, at that's pictures of her. I was oh. like scanning the pictures last night, like a psycho. I, I was telling David, "Here's another one. Here she is. She's smiling. She's having fun." He's like, "Yeah." I used to have to write right. letters back, and I would be like, "Mom, Dad, please." Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just I, I feel terrible. Please don't get me. Yeah, I'll be there in two weeks. They get the got this a week ago. Yeah, I was in a bad place. I'm back home, and they're like. Oh, you didn't feel good? No. <laughs> but belly hurts. My tummy hurts. Because they know, we know that you're going to be fine right, right, right. as parents. So as Paul Maneri right. coming up here at 8 a.m. And then at the end of the 8 o'clock hour, we're going to talk to Mikey Romero, who is the top shortstop in the state of California and the for LSU baseball as soon as Jay Johnson announced uh, was announced that he was following up Paul Maneri as LSU's uh, head baseball coach. Mikey Romero uh, flipped his commitment from the University of Arizona uh, down to LSU, and Romero is a stud uh, as he is uh, the number one shortstop in the state of California and the fifth-rated uh, prospect by perfect game, uh, uh, fifth-rated prospect at shortstop uh, by perfect game. We'll stop by at the end of the 8 o'clock hour, so we'll ask him about uh, what's going on with his recruitment, how the relationship works with Jay Johnson, his thoughts on Johnson, obviously very high if he's going to follow him down here to Baton Rouge uh, as soon as the uh, – uh, the, the the news was announced last week that Romero uh, was uh, was coming down and following Johnson. So, should be an interesting day for LSU baseball. As uh, as we said, the media yesterday uh, surrounding uh, Coach Paul Maneri and Jay Johnson being shown around the there on the field with him at Skip Bertman Field. Uh, so that was a great uh, great picture and photo op. And then today, uh, you'll have the opportunity to hear from Johnson at uh, like we said at 4:45. Uh, this afternoon. Nickname so. yet? We come up with a nickname or anything? I think Mikey, Mikey Romero sounds like an all-time baseball name. It sounds like that kid was 11, and they're like, oh, shit, here comes Mikey. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about a nickname for Jay Johnson. Oh, oh. Deuce? <laughs> Double J? Is he, wearing, is he wearing number two? He is. Yeah. He is. 
The deuce is loose. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's stick around. Like we'll, 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 when we talk to, we'll talk to Paul, then we'll talk to Jay, then we'll figure it all out. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep. <laughs> we need to like get to know his yeah. personality yeah, yeah. a little bit and then find out what to name him. Uh, just watching a little bit of media on him, uh, I mean, he seems like he's, he's an ass kicker. Uh, I mean, he comes from a football background. He thought he was going to be a Heisman Trophy winning running back. At, uh, at going five six one forty, which, which I, love. I can relate to. I mean, right? That's a star going <laughs> well, into, into, into getting college. More yeah, right. I mean, throw me the ball. Um, <laughs> well, and his dad was the head coach, and so his dad he, was the head coach, head so he has coach, a coaching background. Yes, and, and kind of his whole life is known he wanted to be a coach, right? Cool. Um, and, and has that mentality. So uh, I, I think that the more you dive into Jay Johnson, the more that you find out kind of who he is. The only reservation I have still to this point, if I'm only given my, my coast ties only, like that's the only place he's lived, that's the only place he's coached, that's the only place he's really been, uh, can that translate to the Southeastern Conference? That's easy. Bring him in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it absolutely um, will, will, will translate. So, um, no, like, like we said, we were all kind of obviously pushing Vitello. It felt like like we all <laughs> kind of wanted him. But after seeing that video, I'm all in on Jay Johnson. He had, he might have had a little cocktail in the cup. It didn't seem like it was water because he go. was sipping that thing. He's looking out the window, and he just soaked it all in, and it made me realize how much he appreciated the opportunity to coach at LSU. So it really made me kind of like I, I'm in now. I'm in. I was on the fence. Now I'm yeah. in. Yeah, I kind of feel like that for sure, too. I, I am... Uh, like, to see him appreciate it the way that you would hope somebody would. Like, and not, and not, obviously, I'm an LSU homer, but to the Jet, and he's like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. This cool. is unbelievable. Well, and, like, he looks at it as the opportunity of a, of lifetime. a lifetime. Like, we talked about it. I mean, I think that you, you really were seeking somebody that understood and respected the weight of the job but was going to bring in his own mentality. And I like the fact that they got outside the LSU family. You know, I mean, we, we, we talked about that a lot leading up to the hire and, and kind of going through the process of what the qualification would were specifically looking for the next LSU head baseball coach and obviously being tied to the program from a historic standpoint wasn't that meaningful wasn't that big of a deal and and not to discount the history of the program by any means um is now for LSU baseball to take that next step back to the the, the stratosphere that they once were and it has to be uh, in my opinion, um, by stopping to chase the past, right? I mean, it's 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 understood, and it, and it has to be, uh, in my opinion, um, by stopping to chase the past, right? I mean, it's 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 understood who LSU is in the sport. It's it's understood um, the, the the weight and scope uh, that they bring to your ballpark when they pull up for a series or when you come into Baton Rouge. Who they are, everybody understands that. Um, but realistically, you've got two SEC teams playing in a national championship starting tonight, uh, and LSU's not there. And, 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 you know, quite frankly, I mean, they, they really weren't qu close for all intents and purposes. But, but they are, they, they, they feel like they are um, right on the doorstep of being back there. Um, you know, just a couple of power arms away, a recruiting class away from being right back into the final four or at least the best eight alive at the end of the season uh, when you're talking about Omaha. And Jay Johnson, to me, is, is, is the guy that, um, that Scott Woodward sees, sees to do it best. So, uh, like we said, we ride with Scott Woodward. Uh, remember Daily here, we're brought to you by Majestic Coffee. Uh, Majestic Coffee is locally brewed down here in South Louisiana. Uh, you can find Majestic Coffee online at deliciousips.com. We're also driven daily by Go Chevrolet online at G-E-A-U-X Chevrolet.com. They've got a brand new uh, used car lot over there on uh, Florida Boulevard in Sherwood Forest. Uh, and, uh, of course, the brand new lot down in Laplace, Louisiana, is where you can find Go Chevrolet. G-E-A-U-X Chevrolet.com. Get in touch with Lee Carney, the entire crew. We changed out our True Blue Water uh, container this morning, so we got a brand new one up and operating here inside the UDL. If you want your own, you can get online. Where are they? Yep, True Blue Water. T R U Blue Water dot com. True Blue Water. Sourced um, in Kentwood. Absolutely. So uh, we appreciate them for helping us out. So it'll be an interesting day. It'll be a uh, adventurous day here uh, in uh, in South Louisiana as LSU will be in the news uh, with their baseball program uh, and and 
uh, introducing Jay Johnson as the new head baseball coach. College World Series has been fantastic, right? I mean, we talked about that last week. Uh, I think everybody in this room uh, has spent multiple hours with Jeez, their eyeballs so peeled baseball. on Omaha <laughs> and what's been going on. And, and, and the last time that I have done this uh, is, is when LSU was making a deep run. I mean, I can't remember ever being so invested into a College World Series um, tournament with, with, without LSU having a presence. Um, and, and really, I, I thought that the CWS, I thought the NCAA, I thought a lot of people were riding high going into the weekend. Uh, and then this NC State stuff happens. Sad. And it is incredible to think what is happening to the Wolfpack. Yeah. I mean, I cannot fathom the emotion that I would, 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 would be feeling if I was a fan, if I was a supporter, if I was an administrator uh, around the program. You know have, if you know many I many Doug Thompson's they have player, that are fussing? If I was a player it's a riot. on this team, and, and, and let it be said, I think NC State is handling this with the ultimate amount of class. Yep. I mean, the way that they are, are experiencing this, the way that they are handling this, uh, I think is... It, it, it's incredible. It, it is, and their um, fans are all hail and state. They are, and and, and, and this vice is, versa. Yeah, and Everybody's Mississippi State's doing a great job of kind of embracing them. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, if you're if you're North Carolina State, do you not just you just end up hating Vanderbilt no, like for no Vanderbilt reason really that uh, yeah. through no fault of Vanderbilt's own? But it's like, well, that's who we were supposed to play. Right. And if you were watching, like I feel like we've all been pretty invested. Yeah. They had a good a chance as any uh, anybody to win the entire thing. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah, they were rolling. I, I think that they were probably cons- they, were just, they were probably perceived as the favorite, like yeah. going into the weekend with just the way that they were playing. They feel they Hot. felt like Mississippi State feels right now. Yes. They felt like the team that you would dread to play. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what the, the number was by their name. It doesn't matter who, who it was making the play. They just look like the team that I don't want any part of. Yeah. It's like Coastal Carolina. Very much it, so. Where it's a team that nobody much expected, so. and they just come out and look the best. Um, the game, though, I have a question, a dumb question. <laughs> I thought you had to have 14 players to play. Do you not have to have 14 players? You just need nine, do you? Yeah, I mean, well, you have to have, um, I mean, as far as being able to 13. handle the day, um, I mean, you're going to have to have a couple of extra arms. I don't I don't know the official number that's needed okay. to clear a game. Um, but that so those scenes that came out Friday yeah. of, of Vanderbilt and NC State playing where they're standing on the foul lines during the national anthem of the game or some of the scenes inside of NC State dugout during the game where they've got three players and five coaches. they got more right. coaches than they do players yeah. sitting in the dugout. It was surreal. I mean, it was amazing to see a team at this point in the season dealing with these types of restrictions. Right. And good, bad, or indifferent, this is what Kim Mulkey was talking about when she got bounced out of the, the, the NCAA tournament. Yeah. When she made the comment, once it gets down to the Final Four, don't test any of these players because if you miss an opportunity, if you take away an opportunity for one of these, the, right. these players or competitors, how tragic that will be. And like I said, I'm not getting into the politics of it. And I'm not getting into the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated you know, ver- versus the non-vaccine. Oh, but th- this is a scenario and a, um, an example of what Coach Mulkey was describing. And to see the NCAA step in at this point of the year and make that decision to pull those guys off the field and put them on a plane back home when they're in the Final Four and a chance to play for a national championship, I think if there was any, if there was any momentum behind the NCAA left, if there, was, if there was a crowd out there that was still in their corner. supporting or pulling or pushing for the NCAA, that that had to cut the legs out of the entire organization. Anybody that takes that organization for real in 2021, as we sit here and talk going into July, is lost, in my opinion, after seeing some of the things that has happened to them over just the last two weeks. 
I mean, their presence on Capitol Hill with the Supreme Court was embarrassing for Mark Emmert. He was abused by the Supreme Court justice. It was, for their, their point of view, it had to be a monumental embarrassment, just a colossal failure from the NCAA's point of view to go sit on Capitol Hill and really just, I mean, be... Grovel. Just, yeah, absolutely. You had to be thrilled he got the, uh, just he got the extension at. right before. I, exactly. Because like you're proving exactly that what everybody thinks, like you don't do anything. And then to take from that experience and go out and make a choice like this in a tournament where you've got momentum, people are watching People are talking about it. People are really invested in it. You've got corners of the country that are all represented that are bringing in eyeballs you've never had. that you may not be able to touch ever again. And you make this decision for these, the, these student athletes, these coaches, this program. It, 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 to me, was the death nail. If it hasn't already been administered. It was the absolute death nail of the NCAA. Anybody that takes that organization for real, serious, takes them with any type of uh, of accountability, they're lost. They're absolutely lost. And for them to be so out of touch and so unaware and and make a choice like that when you've got 30,000 people sitting in the facility next elbow to elbow watching these guys That's play so bizarre about it and you're going to pull them off yeah. the field on contact tracing <laughs> issues again i'm not getting into the politics i'm not getting into the testing procedures i'm not getting the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated yeah. i'm just telling from my point of view for the NCAA to have the audacity to make that choice during this time of the competitive calendar for NC State is the most unaware, inexplicable, inexcusable choice that they've ever made. And think about what I'm saying. Yeah. Think about how unjust, unfair, and unbalanced that organization has been for decades. And the latest choice they make could be the all the all time worst. I mean, it. I, I still can't believe it. I, yeah. I cannot believe that Vanderbilt forfeited their way into the national championship. It's that, that is unprecedented. That is amazing. That that is incredible. Gotta, and, and again, it is not Vanderbilt's fault. It's not. There's nothing that the Commodores can do about it. There's nothing that Corbin or anybody from that administration. There's nothing that Greg Sankey from the SEC can do about it. But the fact that that happened in 2021, in June, late June of 2021, after what the NCAA has experienced up to this point, forget the 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 the, the far. Uh, past. I'm just talking about the recent past, the recent history. I mean, if you have not seen the Supreme Justice going at Mark Emmert, it, it is, if you're a part of the NCAA's organization and power structure, you've got to look at that and say, my God, what are we even doing? What is our purpose? What is our point? I mean, we just got called and, and compared to Nazi Germany by, by the Supreme Court. I mean, one of the Supreme Court justices looked at Mark Emmer and said, I don't know if there's a country on this planet where your business model's legal. Forget America. I, I don't know if there's anywhere in the world that would recognize what you're doing as legal. I mean, it, it, it wasn't a debate when he was on Capitol Hill. It was it was like your dad talking to you. He's like, "What what the hell were you thinking? Like, how did like why did you think that this would work?" And that, that that's what it felt like. And it, for the person that like um, that gave the, the the Supreme Court Brett Kavanaugh, I believe is who it was, for him to be the one who was he was the beer guy. If y'all don't mm-hmm. remember the how many beers do you drink more, more, yeah. more? Right. He was that guy. For him to have like a public backing in this scenario shows you how badly yeah. the NCAA was yeah. in the wrong. But I ask you, 
what are they supposed to do in this in, like in this scenario? It's still, it seems like nobody really knows how to handle COVID. Do you push it back? What do you do? Because that gives an unfair advantage to pitching, and it and it goes into how the game is played almost. What's the question? On how, what? On Vanderbilt? Yep. Yeah, no. No. What was the NCAA supposed to do? Were they supposed to not? I, like, I, do you wait? That's what I'm asking. Like, I, I, there's I no real way to handle it that's right. Yeah. You I, can't let them go play because that's a black eye in its own right. I'm not sure. I, I don't know yeah. that. I don't know that. But I, I. But this doesn't feel right. That's this yeah. is not right. it. This can't be the this answer. This is not it. I understand that, but what I know, do you do? I don't you know do? the answer. You're right. It's very confusing. like they're in a terrible spot. They're backed into an awful corner yeah, where it is awful. I don't know how to handle this, and neither do you. But anything I do will be wrong. Well, and like, do you know? What you, I don't, y'all probably don't see, but like, Mr. But the State last doesn't... thing we can do is pull the kids you off can't the field. Take, you can't not play the game. I mean, you can't pull the kids off the field. At this point of the at this point it's of the season, it's already happened. They're out. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. What you're were you fine. saying? I, the the way the teams are acting now is so sad. Because, like we have such a huge fan base. Mississippi State does so interactive with each other, and they are like not shaking hands, not giving autographs. There's like pep rallies going on. And they're like, we're coming in a back door. Nobody look at us. Nobody like everybody is scared to death now. Of like, I mean, yeah, because they don't, don't want to get yanked. Yes, well, but I mean, I mean, right now, could you imagine getting that call? I mean. Elliot no. Avent said that call came through at like 1 a.m. on Friday night, Saturday morning. Yeah. That, guys, your season's over. Mm-hmm. We're putting you back on a the plane. Cinderella. We're putting you back on a plane to Raleigh. I mean, <sighs> could I cannot even fathom what it's like to be on either end of that conversation. We talk about um. the LSU, like LSU being the guy in their letter jacket at the bar. These kids will be... Yeah. Huh. At the bar, they're huh. letter like, That is You brutal. want to hear about 2021? Like, that is brutal. <laughs> I mean, if there is any time that Barstool Sports and Dave Portnoy could make anything happen, and they were riding with NC State. He had them to win the tournament. He, he had a, that was his play. Yes. I mean, that was who he had bet on was NC State to win the tournament. And if you're sitting there on Thursday night with that ticket, you're sitting in the catbird seat, feeling great. You're feeling fantastic going into the weekend. I mean. And, and now they don't have, they don't, they don't even have a, they're not even there. They don't have a presence. They don't have a hotel to sit in. And, and they didn't even play a game for you to determine that. How do you sleep at night on both sides of that, man? Well, did you see their post, like NC, NC Early's post, like the next day? It was the record. It was yes. the number of the record turn. And I'm like, this is no, what you are. No, no, it's flex? just. Not only did they do that, they posted the attendance from That's the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they posted, they posted. thank you, NC State, for coming out. It's like, y'all kicked us I'm out. Talking like, about yeah. the attendance. Yeah. I know they did yeah. both. They, no, they posted, <laughs> like, they posted NC State, thank you. They've been doing it to everybody that's yeah. like, lost out of the tournament. Yeah. And they did one for North Carolina State also. It's like, don't even do that. Right. No. Just get off the internet today. That like, you're bad. done with the internet. Yeah. It, it's, it's either the most epic troll job Ever? I know, right? Ever? I would prefer it Where you pay these guys upwards of $3 million to sit around and get laughed at and be brought on Capitol Hill and national television just to be (laughs) mocked and pointed and laughed at. But really, behind closed doors, you're just collecting a bunch of cash and smoking cigars and laughing and carrying on. But, I mean, it's either that or it is the biggest embarrassment of a business model that has ever been constructed. I mean, it is ultimately, I don't know how you take anything that they do seriously. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we, we haven't talked about the NCAA women's tournament. Golf. Or, or we haven't talked about the NCAA women's golf tournament, the NCAA women's basketball tournament, the Capitol Hill thing on, on, on in, in Washington, D.C., now the, the college baseball stuff. And I mean, it, I, I, like everybody out there, am looking forward to college football season, but I'm a nervous wreck now thinking that they may just up and say, hey, forget that top 10 matchup this weekend, pull the plug on it and send Florida back home or send LSU back home or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? If they're making decisions like this where it's just, hey, send them home. I don't know what else we could do, but just get them out of here to where college football is gearing up for full capacity and big-time matchups where they don't step in and say, you know what, hey, uh, this weekend's not going to happen in in, in Columbus or it's not going to happen in in Los Angeles or wherever, whatever the scenario is. I mean, this is – You better figure uh, it the hell out because you're not going to have those – like when you talk about college football – 
you're not going to have two teams lined up uh, 7 p.m. <laughs> in Death Valley and be like, actually. Well, they'll riot. They'll riot. They'll riot. There will be a you, riot. They will riot. You pull them in the final four like you did this. Like, imagine LSU makes it to the, to the final four in football. Like, they're in the playoff. And before you get to go play the first game, they're like, yeah, you got to go back home. Yeah. You had a couple of players test positive. Like, you didn't lose, but you didn't win, be... and you can't play. Yeah. And then it affects you in the – it, yeah. it, it affects your your, your the post margins. season. But yeah, I mean, don't y'all think this is kind of setting the precedent? Like this that's is what, what I'm we're going to see. I, I don't think I mean, they know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I wonder. I, I I do wonder if it would have been Vanderbilt and Mississippi State in this game, where you've got the defending national champ right. going up against the most storied program left in if in the tournament. Right. Two SEC teams. Like if it's don't think the that they're not beating on the door in Indianapolis right. this morning. From Starkville. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tell Mississippi State that that team can't play in a national championship setting right. and see what their fan base is. And that's not a threat. I'm They're not threatening there. that anybody's going to do that. But, I mean, I it just – It would be a riot. It, it, it would be – it would be di- – and like I said, tell that NC Nick Saban, State – Tell Nick Saban his team can't play right. in a college football playoff right. and see what happens if they don't play that game two days later. And yeah. NC State, like I said, um, because I think this will be a 30 for 30 – I think that this yeah. absolutely this whole, yeah, this will be a thirty for the the NC State. The, if, if, if if the if if the College World Series experiment um, or experience is not a thirty for thirty, the NC State experience yeah. definitely will be a thirty for thirty right. ex, uh, show and documentary uh, surrounding twenty twenty one. And I think that the most impressive thing that we will see on that documentary is the way that NC State has handled this. I mean, from yes. the, 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 the statements from their coaches, their athletic directors, to the way that their players have handled this in, in, in an environment in, uh, in their home baseball stadium that they flew back into on Saturday night for what was kind of a, a quasi-pep rally of bringing everybody together and seeing some of the messages and some of the things that, that was coming out uh, during that event. I think that NC State deserves every opportunity, and to have that taken away like that, I just don't know how... I don't know what I you tell your team. Happened. I don't yeah. know what you tell your team. I don't know if you're what, if you're an administrator. What you tell your coach? If you're a, a a state employee? If you're the governor? What you tell the president and the athletic director of of the school? I mean, they've done everything that they were supposed to do. They were riding high in momentum going into a championship series, and just have their legs cut out from under them mm-hmm. from an organization that has lost more credibility over the last four years than, than like a cartel. I mean, like, they feel like, they feel so illegal. They feel they so... They feel so exposed. Right. Yes, they do. They feel very much exposed. They feel very much... It almost felt like they made that decision kind of like to despite you. You know what I mean? Just like, to say that we still think, have power. You think our power's gone? Watch this. Oh, yank you. Exactly. NC State, get your butt home, man. You've got two with... I just I, look, I'm, like I said, when I get into the story of the politics and the vaccination and all that stuff, but un- unreal. Well, who's to say this isn't going to happen again today, well, tomorrow? How can you? I mean, right. they're still testing. I mean, they're still. Having if you talk to about contact the tracing, they're all in the field at the same time. But if you're Vanderbilt, do you not feel like you kind of got a pass here, and maybe that this is? Oh, you get two days rest. With yeah, two days rest. rest. Yeah. That's what I'm for saying. Two two days. Days. The way it sets up for Vanderbilt, you didn't pitch lighter. Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, you, instead of not having lighter at all, you get to pitch them game one. Yes. But let me say this: going into the series, I don't care if they had two days rest or three days rest. I don't want Mississippi State. I didn't right. want North Carolina. I don't want to see Mississippi State if I'm anybody right now. But that team still is unfair. playing. It's still an unfair advantage. We can debate that all day. I, I mean, mean, but don't y'all agree like to have those two guys resting for two days? Oh, that's what, yeah, that's why yeah, I brought I mean, it up. To be able to go pitch lighter game one when yeah. he might not you have just, been able to pitch at all. Yeah. Vanderbilt just got their biggest advantage back. Yeah, their did. biggest advantage was having Kumar Rocker and Jack Leiter as their one yeah. and two. And then if you're, but in a tournament like this, you have to throw them in times when you don't want to. Yeah. And now that they get to rest, they come back at full strength. Right. Yeah. And also, is there a more Mississippi State name than Rowdy? No. What, did, how, was um, he just born to play at Mississippi State? Yes. <laughs> Tanner Leger. Yes. Or what's what's a uh, the, the the closer's name? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't watch him that close. I mean, that dude is that dude is. Are you a about Tanner Allen? Um, no, Tanner Allen was the one that got the game that got the walk off. But uh, I don't know who the closer is. But I just thought Rowdy. Like when I saw Rowdy, I was like, "That's the most Mississippi State thing of it all is. time." Uh, Jesse like McCormick, good friend of ours, who was inside of the uh, of the bunker, brings up a good point. Uh, Alabama had one positive COVID test last season during <laughs> college football season. That was Nick Saban, 
who threatened the life of the NCAA, if you remember the week of that Georgia game, and had his butt back on the sidelines, I think 72 hours later. Now, he did miss one matchup that Sarkeesian was the coach for, and I think it was a big one. Um, was it Auburn? It late in the, I think Auburn. it might have been Auburn late in the season that he missed. Um, but that's the only positive test that Alabama had. Well, you know what's the only positive? Because he was tested first, tested positive. He said, shut this yes, shit down. Yes, absolutely. Shut this shit Nobody down. Else Nobody else is else getting, getting tested. tested. Nobody Nobody's getting out. a positive test. <laughs> I can promise you that. I'll miss the game, but don't you swab another one. A uh, human being clean. in this, in this, uh, in this <laughs> building. That's exactly right. Uh, Daily, we are brought to you here by John Saw and Spillers. They are our dentist here on the Jordy Collada Show. Remember, get in touch with Dr. John Saw and Dr. Spillers Thursday. Thursday of this week, oh, yeah. uh, we will have the uh, the extraction again. and the replacement Friday from, uh, show will be from, great uh, from Doctor <laughs> Spillers. Live stream it? Uh, maybe, <laughs> possibly. Uh, that, that'll be in the Gonzalez location on Thursday. There's two locations: a Baton Rouge location and a Gonzalez location. Find them online at johnsonspillers.com. Got great social media around the uh, around the dentist, uh, our dentist over there with uh, Doctor Johnson and Doctor Spillers. So make sure and see them uh, online at Johnson Spillers. Uh, dot com. Another uh, piece of news. That, and remember, we're going to talk to Paul Maneri here uh, in about 25 minutes as Coach Maneri will stop by. He'll give uh, his thoughts on uh, meeting Coach Jay Johnson yesterday and showing him around the facility. We'll ask him if he's had a, uh, a relationship with now the new LSU head ba- uh, baseball coach and uh, get some of his thoughts there. Tomorrow, we will be joined by Darius Days at 815 here on the Jordy Collada Show. I don't think you want to miss that interview. Uh, they, they, there, there should be some, some good news in that interview uh, with Days stopping by here. It'll be some point uh, during the 8 o'clock hour. Uh, but LSU basketball expecting some good news over the next 24 hours uh, from one of their veterans uh, in Darius Days. And uh, he will be here tomorrow uh, at 8.15 uh, to give us the latest. Uh, one of the, uh, the things that we missed last week uh, in, in, in a couple of our days out and Jack, Noah, Lloyd, everybody, Katie did a fantastic job of stepping in last week and keeping the train rolling down the tracks. And I don't the know. Trio, the boy trio. Uh, the trio. I don't know if, uh, if, if you guys were able to touch on this uh, a lot, uh, but it is something that, that obviously has, has captivated uh, South Louisiana. Like I said, I spent uh, some, times, uh, some time this weekend at a, uh, a Baton Rouge social function uh, on Friday night. I went to a wedding. Uh, in Baton Rouge on uh, on Friday Special night, function. and then on uh, <laughs> and then on Saturday, I was kind of bouncing around New Orleans. Uh, I went on a bike ride. We were kind of bouncing around pools and, and and restaurants, and a lot of people were talking about the Catholic High ruling uh, from the LHSAA, and, and there was a lot of comparison uh, between the NCAA and the LHSAA uh, over the weekend, and some of the conversations that I was having uh, with, with 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 a lot of people. Uh, whether it was in Baton Rouge or whether it was in New Orleans. And, forget, and, and don't forget, the New Orleans crowd has a ton of invested interest in, into what's happening with Catholic High right. because Catholic High beat New Orleans teams for oh, their state championships. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I believe they beat, C, they beat Bird uh, for one of their state championships. Is but they the beat one that's pulled? John Curtis. They beat Rummel. Um, yeah. I mean, and, like that and, was the championship. And, and, the, and the two runner-ups, I believe, were to uh, Rummel. Uh, two New Orleans teams. Uh, so there are a lot of New Orleans. I mean, you can take my runners up. I really sure. don't care Absolutely. about that. Why Absolutely. did it happen? Uh, y- you can take all my trophies from the past. Just like Reggie Bush's Heisman, you can have it, but he won it. I still had the emotion. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Like, like, I, I, remember, yes. I remember watching that season and remember saying, you know what, Reggie Bush is the best college football player in the country in 2005. He deserves the Heisman Trophy. And if you want to take that away because his parents got a house, then I ain't buying it. Right, <laughs> Reggie didn't do have anything to do with it. And if you're gonna, if you're going to to take Catholic High's trophies away retroactively for something that, quite frankly, um, you know, let's let's be honest. Everyone does. <laughs> I mean, you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me with this stuff? I mean, that they, 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 there have been examples, laundry list long of schools. That have done this. So why did they get called out or well, punished? It was just about time. Well, I think they, they were doing it very blatantly. Okay. And that they had a, a plan in place that was very organized. And along the way, and here's the dangerous, here's the danger 
uh, of running these operations at this level. When you've got personnel coaches that buy in to the the plan, right? Of and this is all based around recruiting. It, it, let, let's let's get this out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people are speculating what, what's going on. The, the the details are closed by the LHSAA, which they have put that into motion and have done that since 2017 or 2018 is when they started doing that. When they had some high profile cases from Hanville, McKinley, Southern Lab, where the penalties were exposed, the names of the coaches were exposed, and there was a ton of uh, pushback from that. So in 2018, LHSAA changed their philosophy, changed their guidelines on how they handled media uh, and, and public details of penalties, violations, uh, fines, and coaches' names. And that is what is, is kicking up a lot of uh, the feedback, the, 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 the anger from from people around town is because you expose schools like McKinley and Southern Lab where they were doing very similar things and then when it gets to Catholic High you you don't say anything now since then the guidelines have been changed but this is going to be a heavy topic in 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 our area because of that alone and the issues that that kicks up and that's race and that's what's at the the, the bottom line of of this argument is there's feeling of a double standard right. in the way that this is handled. And, and then there, there's no real detail on what the penalties are for Catholic High. Ben De Palma, who is a, uh, who's a great guy, runs Catholic High, uh, runs, uh, is a spokesperson. He doesn't run Catholic High. He, he's a spokesperson, spokesperson uh, for Catholic High. And I'll get you his official title, but he is he's within the executive order of uh, of of Catholic High. He's within the executive team of uh, of Catholic High. Um, and he is the athletic director. Excuse me. Uh, he is now the AD because J.P. Kelly, who was the AD during this time, has been uh, reassigned a position uh, inside of the Catholic High administration. Um, but he is said publicly um, that they're not. Uh, they're not doing anything with the fines. They're not trying to appeal uh, the fines. They're accepting the penalties and that they are forfeiting um, their two state titles and their two state runner-ups. Their two state titles came in 17 and 20, and their two runner-ups came in 18 and 19. Uh, so you can see that, LA, that, that Catholic High has had tremendous amount of success mm-hmm. over the last five years in, Catholic, in, in, in high school football. Um, I have two questions. What are they? One, is this why Gabe Fertitta left? Yes. Yes. And two, is this only concentrated on football, or is this going to come out in other sports at Catholic High? I think that's what we don't know. I think that's what's in the details, you know, because Catholic High's head basketball coach, Mark Cassio, left as well. Yes. Um, And that surprised some people within the Catholic High community. Yep. Um, I don't know if it surprised uh, a lot of people that know Cassio, and I know Cassio uh, fairly well and knew that he has – strong ambition to be a coach uh, at the highest level or yes. a- around college basketball. He'd, mm-hmm. he'd like to be at the level of college basketball and is smart enough and works hard enough and has got a, a good reputation uh, to get there. And at some point, you've just got to make the leap into a college job if you want to get into that fraternity, mm-hmm. if you want to get into that role, if you want to get into that industry, you've just got to jump. So Appalachian State's women's program offered him a – uh, you know, a small administrator role, and he just jumped. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what you have to do if you want to get into that, in, into that sector, if you want to get into that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what Casio did. Now, it looks a little shady, and, and it looks a little weird because, um, you know, I think Gabe Fertitta saw this coming down the pipe and thought, you know, let me just kind of beat the PR here. And, and Gabe was another one that has high aspirations, strong enough coach, mentally capable to go coach at the college level, and he's had opportunities come his way, and now was the time. Mm-hmm. With all this stuff kind of coming in and, and, and the opportunity at Louisville to get over there and coach the wide receivers, it kind of made sense for him 
Yeah, that wasn't the biggest red now. flag to see yeah. him leave because it seemed like he'd almost outgrown the job. Like it seemed like he had, like you said, he had bigger aspirations. Yeah, I thought to that get too, into college. Like I wouldn't. Out. Right, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't a red flag to me. It's like, oh right. shit, Catholic might be in trouble. Yeah. It's just like Gabe Fertitta is going to be a college head coach one day. Right. Yeah. And so like, it, it played out perfectly for him. But when you start seeing the other, like the other foot drop in terms of the Catholic coaches, you're like something's happening there. Yeah. Like well, we, the, the writing was on the wall. Yeah, I mean, you could see it. Um, yeah, you obviously could see because there was a lot of speculation when uh, when David Simino came in if there was going to be a lot of carryover of the coaches on staff because that not only does Catholic High and I had uh, I've had two college uh, I've had one head football coach college Division One Power Five SEC head football coach tell me this and another recruiting coordinator tell me this both from different schools the head coach. You obviously probably can figure out who that one was, but a recruiting coordinator from around the conference both told me who recruit Louisiana that Catholic High has the best football roster in the state right now. Like for the last three years they have, and currently right now, I mean, they think about some of the guys on that, that, that team. I mean, they got Shelton Sampson, who's a number one wide receiver. You've got offensive linemen like Emory Jones, who's a top wide receiver. They've got youngsters on that team like, like, like the Beal kid who's the quarterback, then you start talking about, you know, some of these uh, Brooks and Bradley Wright coming up. I mean, they got studs in the pipeline at Catholic High. And, 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 and a lot of this recruiting, well, a, lot of, a lot of the recruiting methods in Baton Rouge center around Memorial Stadium on Saturday mornings. If you want to talk about high schools and what, how would I even recruit if I was a high school coach, go park your butt there on, on Memorial Stadium on a Saturday morning and watch Dylan Moses and, and a Darius Geis. And name a Baton Rouge football player that has come through here. Dylan Moses' younger brother. Exactly. Keelan Moses. Uh, Qu- Quincy Wiggins was on that football field as a 7th and 8th grader. Anybody that you think is making an impact is coming up right there at Memorial Stadium on a Saturday morning. You can go just go pay your $3, get in, and you can watch the best of youth football in our city. That, that has all, If you're trying to build a roster, you know what I mean, you can do that right there. Catholic High was like going and, and, and planning themselves at like Catholic school gyms and football fields around. It, it was very detailed. It was very organized. It was almost like a college staff. Right. They were going to sit at these middle schools that they know – hey, if, if I give this kid a chance to come to Catholic, their parents are going to be all in. And so it was very well It's like a scholarship out. opportunity. It was very well it's, it, out. There's a lot of parallels you can draw, and I don't know if I should say this or not, but a lot of parallels you can then draw from yourself. LHSAA <laughs> to NCAA. Well, that's why we yeah, said, yeah, we said I, that yeah, leading yeah, off. Yeah, no, but it's just the more you talk about it, the more it just becomes very apparent that I don't know if they know what they're doing, and I don't know if the NCAA knows what they're doing, but they know that they have, like, one hammer to, to strike down with, and they're going to do it, like – Ad nauseum. They're just like, all right, that's against the rules. Like, it just seems all very, as organized as Catholic is, it seems very disjointed from the LHSA like standpoint. Yes. Well, I mean, the LHSA has a very feel. I mean, it worked for them. Ha- I know has how very is. much a feel of disconnection. Yeah, they gave um, me a lot of paperwork that just went to the trash. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> they, they have a lot of, uh, you know, the feeling around them um, is just unaware, disconnected. You know, I mean, yeah. just they, they don't have any. Uh, they don't have a relationship with, 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 with their organization who would like be like the, uh, like the players association, like their coaches association is who, and their principals is who they work hand in hand. I mean, the principals pretty much run the LHSAA, right? I mean, like that's, that's their governing body. That's who Eddie Bonine and his crew are, are pleading with when they're asking. They're trying to glad hand those people to make sure nothing bad actually that's who, ever That's who happens. controls all the votes. Right. You know what I mean? That's who controls all of the say-so within that organization. And they're trying not to get um, fired. Exactly. And, and you know, na- and, and they're in this Catholic High case, there's red tape because Bonine's kid goes to Catholic High. I mean, like, um, I, I know this for a fact in, in talking to a lot of people at the LHSAA. Eric Held, who, her- you know, who, hire- who holds a high position at the LHSAA, I mean, he spent six years in his assistant coach at Catholic High. It's got to be very... Murky. Weird for him in the office. I can imagine that his phone is blowing up from coaches and contacts from around the state asking what's going on. I know that the LHSAA left him out of all of those meetings, left him out of all of of the penalty discussion, of everything that went on around this Catholic high topic. Held had no, he had no say-so, he had no presence within any of this. I mean, it's just a very weird situation 
for the LHSAA to be in in, in this with Catholic High. Because, I mean, that's like last, I said, you've got Bonines crossover. You've got a couple of administrators. That's the last one they wanted to see in bed. Oh, yes. I mean, this is their Alabama. Yes. This is the SEC's Alabama. Um, and, you know, this, the, the fallout of it has been real. Like I said, yet. everybody that I ran into this weekend talked to me about a couple of uh, two things. Was the, the, the NC State stuff and the NCAA kicking those guys out of the tournament and sending them home. And then to the Catholic High stuff. I mean, immediately. And, and, and like I said, both in Baton Rouge and New Orleans. I mean, people are curious. What the hell's going on? Why did this happen to McKinley and Southern Lab, but it didn't happen to Catholic High? And it's, it, it, is, it is feasible. Because if you, if you remember the Southern Lab and McKinley's, they were giving you names. They were giving you details. They were giving you numbers and prices and, and everything that was going on. Did the same thing happen to them? Did they get titles pulled? Did they have time? They did, but they had postseason ban. Okay. Um, and that's what they're waiting on to see. What they're that's gonna not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And, and, and also, their current roster with the way that it's put together, nobody has to, nobody has to move. Nobody has yeah. to leave. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, Catholic High is probably the favorite going into the... Right. Oh, that's, well, that's I mean, why it's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean... Mm-hmm. Um, Does it feel like that maybe... Louisiana football has outgrown the LHSAA. Like they're not. Yes. They're not ready. They can't handle. They this. can't handle. It's it. too much. They can't it's handle. Too, it. It's too. It's too. It's too big. big. It's too powerful. Well, because every school does it in every sport. They go. You go watch. Kid, like there's guys that I played basketball with in middle school, and they didn't play with me at Central. They're playing at other private schools, and you know they didn't just move. So like it's stuff like that happens. Right. And it's just the fact that Catholic got so comfortable. And was doing it just yeah right in your well, you, face. I mean, like, they look. saw people doing it before them. Right. I, I, look, man, I'm not here to 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 get anybody in trouble, but I mean, I called University High football for seven years on the radio. During those seven years, they put 18 guys into the SEC, right. not Division <laughs> One. I'm talking about like big time football players right. coming through here. And a lot of those guys were from the South Baton Rouge Rams. Yeah. They were playing at Memorial Stadium. Now, a lot of that pipeline that was coming to you high just transferred and going to Catholic right. High now. Right. When Chad Mahaffey and that crew got out of there, when the when they saw they saw the stuff rolling downhill, you know what I mean? And they, yeah. they kind of said, Hey, hey, whoa, 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 I gotta get out of here. I gotta you gotta find a job. Right. You know, and 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 now they're at different places. Catholic High said, Hey, look, there's an opening with right. this pipeline that they're getting a ton of players. Let, let's see if we can't patch into this and, and, and start... We'll get in trouble later. Yeah, right. I mean... <laughs> um, let's go, win, some, I mean, when let's go I, win a couple state championships. When I was growing up, the teams in North Louisiana were doing this habitually. Right. I mean, Evangel right. would have a quarterback from Texas that right. would move in mid-season to replace Brock Berlin or replace a, a top 20 prospect. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was... It, it, it's been happening forever. Yeah. It's been happening forever. And it's been happening in, in a lot of sports. It's been happening in a lot of schools. Um, and, and I think a lot of people around our area and around high school football uh, had a smile on their face when they saw that gavel come down on Catholic High. Right. But then when they saw that they couldn't read the details of the punishment and that there was just a lot of retroactivity yeah. that was happening with that punishment, then a lot of people are saying, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold right. up. Hold up. What, what, why, why did it happen like this? In, in 17 and 18, right. when we could see the details, and now that we're, we're guessing on the details, right. it doesn't look like it's the same type of, of pun. And, 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 oh, by the way, your kid goes to school there? Yeah. And you it's had an administrator that used to oof. work. What? Hold up. Hang on. Hang on. It's I got like a lot of more like questions a, now. Onion. It's just got layers yeah, you're just kind of peeling up. it back, man. Um, so... Uh, it, 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 it is it is grimy. Yeah. It is grimy. Yeah, it is grimy. Do you think that this is the first time that some people have been exposed to this? Because I feel like just because I've been a fan of I college football. I think at Catholic High. Yes. No, yes. that's what I'm saying. That's, like, that, that's the larger point. I've been a fan of college football for so long. I've known that this is how recruiting goes. Like, it's obviously not, like, I'm not just picking the school because I like the school. Like, there's some things that happen to where, you know, people go places for certain reasons. I don't think that people understood that it happens in high school also. Yeah, no, I don't. I, well, I think that 
the models like IG, uh, uh, IMG, uh, yes. um, schools like that have kind of brought it more mainstream. I mean, I remember calling Dylan Moses' game his sophomore year and seeing IMG Academy representatives on the sideline. Right. I mean, the Alabama was there, LSU was there, Ole Miss was there, Georgia was there, and it's IMG like was there. college. Yeah, right. I mean, it was like <laughs> – But why is that okay for I don't them? know that. Like, I, I can't answer. I don't know why it's, it would be – but nobody legal that, for right? IMG to do that, no, and it would be it, illegal. Has, it would be an illegal. Eye. Well, because I, IMG's a, a preparatory school. It's a prep right. school. So like a boarding school. You, you go there whenever after you basically It's graduate. like a fifth-year like high you school. You go there for your fifth year. So there's different layers to it that, oh, they can do it because of this, this, and this. But we can't. And so, like, even when you see them, like, transfer schools, a lot of the times – it's like a recruitment photo. They're Absolutely. Like, I'm no longer going here. It's a right. transfer you know, portal. The big logo behind them. I'm going to this school. And so it's just, it's college. And, and, and it's when it's a big deal like it is in South Louisiana, it's, it's, it's college. It's the, 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 the football structure is going through a, a refurbishment right now of expansion from four to 12 teams in the playoff right. because of, of what somebody sees from a financial advantage standpoint. Um, in the NCAA, I think the same needs to happen with the LHSAA. The model in which football exists in our state, it, it, it can't hold it. Yeah. It's, it's not, Too much it's water not in the put together well enough to really manage the product. The product of high school football in the state of Louisiana is a commodity, is something that everybody wants to get their hands on, whether it's college recruiters or whether it's high school coaches everybody sees the money at the end of the day and the advantage that it can mean for i mean don't think that chad mahaffey didn't get a better job or a a better financial package at walker because of the success that he had at university high don't don't think that 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 gabe fertita didn't see a jump in his pay from going from a high school staff head coach to a college, you know, one of the eight on-field coaches for Louisville. I mean, all of that stuff worked out for those guys as far as being able to better their career and help their families out. That's why they're parked at Memorial Stadium on a Saturday morning, if you really want to know the truth. I mean, they're competitors. They want to win, but they're highly motivated guys that want to get to the next level. And to do that, you need to put together the best roster in the state. And if you want the best roster at the state, the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders that are playing at Memorial Stadium will win you a state championship in three years. It's proven. Yeah, but well, they're 6'2", 215 pounds in eighth grade. It's Lady on Moss. Right. Yeah. It's Quincy right. Wiggins. It's it, it's Dylan Freaks. Moses. It's, yes. it's, it's it's Keela Moses. It's, it's everybody that's come out of this city that, that, that means anything on Saturday or Sunday. I mean, imagine being a coach and not knowing that they exist. Like, right. bro, where have you been? You have to go to Memorial Stadium to go see these kids play. Like, I didn't even know up until a month ago that Dylan Moses had a brother, then you see him. Imagine being a coach and be like, oh, Dylan Moses has a brother? It's like, right. yeah, look right. at yeah. him. The Go kid, watch The one him that play. looks like the Terminator. Yes. <laughs> That's him. He looks like Dylan Moses 2.0. <laughs> exactly. Uh, daily here, we are brought to you by Edward Jones. They are our financial advisor over there with Daniel Newman. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com is where you can get in touch with him over at uh, Edward Jones. He's in Central, across from Stabs. Stop in and see him. Great conversation, but he can help you out with your finances as well. If you need some direction on your 401K, on investments, on Social Security, uh, get in touch with Daniel Newman. Daniel.Newman at EdwardJones.com. You can find him there. Uh, Easy to find him there out in Central Hill. Uh, Probably walk you across the street, grab a drink and lunch over at Stabs and talk to you about how he can help you out with the financial uh, stuff, especially if you're working in the plant system. Dow, BASF, anything here in South Louisiana, around the plants or anywhere. Uh, Daniel really understands uh, the financial makeup uh, of those organizations and can really help you, whether it is right now while you're on the job or post-life when you get out of, uh, out of your career. Uh, he can help you out with everything that's going on from investing, 401K, like we said, Social Security, all of it. He's fantastic, man. Daniel.Newman at edwardjones.com. Uh, former LSU head baseball coach, strange to say, Paul Maneri, will join us here in a couple of minutes. Great video yesterday as uh, Jay Johnson uh, landed in Baton Rouge over the weekend. Uh, Coach Maneri showed him around the facility yesterday over at the box. Skip Bertman came down for a photo op uh, down on the field before uh, they got out of there. We'll ask him about some of those conversations about uh, Jay Johnson taking over. Uh, We'll get his thoughts on this NC State stuff. Just as as a head coach, could you imagine 
ha- having to deal with that. Uh, and, and, and if he has uh, any experience or has talked to anybody close to that situation, will Coach Benary get on Twitter now? Will he be on social media? Uh, we'll ask him all that next year uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. Driven and powered daily by Go Chevrolet. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me, jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn about the Bank Statement Loan Program offered by Angel Oak. jordy at jordycoladashow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com, or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Welcome back in here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet every single day here. Stick around. We will be joined by Mikey Romero, number one shortstop in the state of California and the uh, uh, the latest commit to LSU baseball. Uh, he committed to Jay Johnson's LSU baseball program, which is weird to say. It is weird. As uh, Coach Maneri, Coach Paul Maneri, spent, Paul offered him? Uh, spent so much time uh, here at, uh, at LSU, uh, an illustrious career. Uh, as we said uh, last week, always represented uh, his family, the program, the state of Louisiana with such class and now passing on uh, that office. It was weird to see that office door swing open yesterday and not see all the, the trophies and accolades placed up against the back wall as uh, Coach Maneri was showing Jay Johnson around and he joins Killer us now he had. here on the, uh, on the uh, Jordy Collada show. Coach Maneri, good, uh, good morning. Thank you as always for your time. Uh, good morning, Jordy. How are you? Doing okay. Uh, great video from LSU baseball yesterday. Pitted out uh, as uh, as you as coach as you and Coach Johnson were walking around the facility. What was that meeting like? <laughs> well, it, it was great. Uh, I met uh, Jay yesterday morning at um, eight a.m. We actually spent about six hours together yesterday, and was kind of passing the the, the keys to him. You know. Um, we went over a lot of things together. He's a great guy. Uh, I, I didn't know him a lot until yesterday. We, we've known each other a little bit. You know, his college baseball fraternity is pretty small, and we have a lot of mutual friends. So we felt like we knew each other. Jay had left me a couple of really nice text messages uh, and voicemails, you know, after the 1500th win and then, of course, after my retirement announcement. So I felt like I knew him already, but we had a great visit yesterday, and um, I think LSU fans are really going to love the guy. He, he's a very intelligent man. He's got a good plan. 
uh, he was very attentive and asked a lot of questions. And uh, it, we really spent a, a lot of good quality time together yesterday. But I, from a personal standpoint, I got to tell you, it was a little bit strange, you know, <laughs> you know, just, you know, what, what it seemed has been so routine for me for so many years. Uh, felt very awkward, you know, pulling into a parking spot that used to be my parking spot or walking into an office that used to be my office, <laughs> you know, yes. is, is not, not, not mine anymore. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I knew it was coming. I knew the day was coming and, and I was prepared for it. Um, but when the harsh reality sets in, you know, you realize, Hey, the game doesn't stop for anybody and the clock keeps ticking. And, uh, I, I feel very proud of what we're passing on to him, but I also, uh, I want this to be a, a seamless transition, and I want to help him as much as I can, as much as he asks for. Coach Paul Maneri joining us. Yes, sir. Uh, Coach Paul Maneri joining us here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, was there anything yesterday in, in the, the six hours that, that you guys spent together, was there anything that you went into that meeting that you made sure you wanted him to know before you left him for the day, just the, the first day on the job? Was there anything that you, you made sure that you wanted to – to get across to him? Only the things that he thought were important, really, Jordy, because I, I really am making a, a very concerted effort not to overstep my boundaries, you know, because what's important to me may not be important to him, and I don't want in any way him to think he has to meet my standards or, or the, make important what I thought was important. He's had, he has to be his own man, and he has to run the program the way that he wants to run it. He asked a lot of questions, and he asked my opinions about a lot of things, and I gave him my opinions when he when he asked for them. But there was nothing that I had. I said, look, you absolutely have to do this because there is no absolutes. He, he has to run the program the way that he feels fit, and he has to be responsible for it. You know, people around here are going to hold him responsible uh, for some very high expectations, and he knows that. And I think he has to have the right to do it however the, however he wants to do it. And, and I think he's going to be a very competent coach. I think he's going to be an outstanding coach. And, um, you know, I just want to do nothing but help. Yeah, and the, uh, the, the fan base and the media will get a chance to see him this afternoon as he's introduced at 4.30 at the LSU Baseball uh, Operations Facility as, as the head coach. Uh, and, Coach, if there was one, and, and we'll move on from Coach Jay Johnson because, like I said, we'll get to know him this afternoon and, and, and talk about your career and what's next. Uh, but if, the, if I could ask you just one thing, uh, just an observation from you and an opinion, being a, a, a primarily a West Coast guy or really an only a West Coast guy, uh, playing out there from there and coaching out there, how do you think that translates to the SEC? Yeah, I don't think people should worry about that. I really don't. I think uh, I think – Scott did his due diligence. I think he looked at four really outstanding coaches at the end, and any one of those coaches would have done a great job here. I do believe that, and I think he, I think Scott picked the one that he felt would be the best coach, and regardless of where he was from. Listen, I came from the Midwest. Yeah, you know, I grew up in Miami, and I know I spent a year here at LSU as a student athlete, and I spent two years in New Orleans. But I didn't have any recruiting contacts here in Louisiana or even necessarily in the southeastern part of the United States. And I, I adapted. And, and what you do is you hire the best coach that you, that you think you can find. He's going to hire a coaching staff. He talked to me about this. He's going to hire two, two coaches that have ties to this area. And I think he's he, smart enough to realize that he needs to have some ties here. And the assistant coaches do so much work in recruiting, and I think that he's smart enough to realize that. And that will maybe make up for the fact that he doesn't know this area as, as well. But so much of college baseball recruiting, too, is national. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going he's gonna to recruit the heart and soul of his team like I did from the state of Louisiana, but you're going to have to expand and go into other areas as well. And that's just that's the way Nolan did it when he was with me, and it's the way all of our recruiting coordinators have done it. So I, I think that's maybe being overblown a little bit too much. Um, Jay is an outstanding coach. The, the Pac-12 was a very competitive league. You had to beat Stanford. You had to beat Oregon. You had to beat Arizona State. You had to beat a lot of really good teams out there. 
obviously the SEC is a notch above everything else. You can see the finals of the College World Series are two SEC teams. But Jay's not afraid of competition. And I, I think he's going to, you know, go into it. And he understands it. I, I told him, hey, Jay, listen, I'm sorry I'm passing this on to you, but get ready for a trip next year to Vanderbilt, to Gainesville, to <laughs> Starkville, <Right>. to, to, <laughs> to Fayetteville. I mean, that, that's next year, you know. I mean, and, and the following year it'll be just as tough, you know. But that, that's just the SEC. He, he knows what the expectations are. He knows uh, what the, um, what, how stiff the competition is. I, I, if I was a fan of LSU baseball, I wouldn't worry about where Jay came from. I'd only worry about the – not worry, but I'd only concern myself as what, how, how much of a quality is the coach. And I think Jay is a really high-quality coach. You did it for 40 years. You, you did it better than, than a lot of people ha- have coached baseball at that level. Uh, National Coach of the Year, SEC Coach of the Year, Big East Coach of the Year, National Champ. You won the Skip Burtman Award. What was last Monday like waking up for you where you didn't have a team to coach or a, a ballpark or an office to go Thing to? to do. Jordy, it, it, I can't lie to you. It, it's been different for me. It's, um, I'm still working through the emotions of it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's been hard. Um, but I keep reminding myself that, Hey, I'm the one that decided that nobody forced me into this, you know? Right. And, and, I got to be a man about it and, and realize that nothing can last forever. And I've just been the luckiest guy in the world. And I, I keep reminding myself of that. I got to do something that I wanted to do for literally four decades. And it's been, it's been a thrill for me. I've, I've worked at four wonderful institutions. And of course the final one was the best LSU uh, got to, I got to fulfill every dream that I could have imagined in my profession. Uh, most importantly, even beyond winning national championships and SEC championships and winning 1,500 games, all those all those accolades of Coach of the Year awards and everything else. The most important thing for me was just impacting young people's lives and 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 you know just feeling like you made a difference in people's lives. I got to do everything I ever set out to do in the profession. And, I, you know, if I had coached for one year more, two years more, or three years more, you know, I, I wouldn't probably have felt any more fulfilled than I'd feel right now. So mm. I, I realized that life goes on, and at some point I was going to have to step aside. And, and maybe I did it a year or two or three more earlier than I had anticipated doing it. But it doesn't make me feel any less fulfilled if you know what I'm saying but I, still having to deal with the emotions of it is hard and um, and I'm getting there you know I'm going to get there but I'm excited too about living in Baton Rouge I'm exciting about a new ch- excited about a new chapter in my life um, and, and once I get through this part where Jay's being introduced and I'm kind of h- helping him with the transition then I think I'll feel more uh, retired, if you know what yeah. I'm saying. I, yeah. I'll feel it. Kind like of I've been anxious. Of it. Yeah, I've been anxious for the new coach to come aboard so I could help him in the transition, and then I, and then I'll feel really like okay, that that chapter of my life now has ended, yeah. and I can go ahead and move on. But it, but I'm still kind of getting there, if you yeah. know what I'm saying. For sure, for sure. Your 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 transparency and honesty through this whole thing has been very endearing. To and not that I've been surprised because you have always been that with the fan base and the media but your, your press conference and uh, those thoughts that you just shared is has is, been very interesting to hear because I, I think a lot of people can feel that I, I don't think that anybody felt like you were forced out of the game or that you 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 were done with it I mean you you obviously can still coach at a high level and this this must be tough uh to to to, to I, do it I, but Jordy for me though I, I just never could I could never accept mediocrity mm-hmm. you know I, when I went into it, you know, my te- the teachings from my father were always to be the best. And I just felt like right now I, I, I didn't have it in me to still be the best. And I couldn't accept that out of myself. Does that make sense? Yes, it does very much. So, so I, just, I just felt, I felt it was time. Yeah. And so yes. I made the decision and that was it. 
Thank you, Coach. Thank you for sharing that with us this morning. Uh, you mentioned the baseball coaching fraternity, um, and, and you guys are all so tight. Um, c- can you imagine being in Elliott Avent's shoes this morning, the NC State baseball coach, and dealing oh with God. what he's dealt with over the last 72 hours? We well, you know Elliot's a close friend of mine, and ironically, the night before, he called me at 11 o'clock at night. Wow. And we talked for a half an hour, and he had no idea at that point. You know, he was, he was, we were talking about him facing Kumar Rocker the next day, and, you know, do you think he can have an off day? Do you think we can beat him? And you know, we were talking about the game and how exciting, you know, everything was at that point in his life. And, oh, my God, the next day, we, you know, I find out about, about this, uh, you know, the, well, that was, I'm sorry, that, that was the day before he only could play with 13 players, you know. And then, of course, then they get thrown out of the tournament. I, I, I don't know what to make of it. I'm, I'm really angry about it, to be honest with you. I just can't believe that it got to this point. I don't know all the circumstances exactly, right. but it's, it's just such a fiasco, and I'm just so sad for him and for his players. Could you imagine working your whole career to get to that point as a coach or for those young men who get this one opportunity in their life I mean, coach, and to have it taken away from them? We're fan- oh, my God. We're fans watching that. I couldn't imagine being in y'all's shoes. I mean, the guys that put the work in, the guys that, that, that you, you, you wrote this down for them in the offseason to be playing this weekend, and here you are. And, and they felt like – they felt like kind of the favorite going into the week. They were just playing with a, the, the, just a, money. Sin, a sincere belief to them. Hey, they almost beat Vanderbilt I know. with with a makeshift team. I mean, the kid that played first base hadn't even batted all year. You know, the, they're, they're putting in guys that, that hadn't hit since April. I mean, they had four starting players out. They pitched a guy that pitched eight innings all day, I mean, all year. And they still almost beat Rocker and Vanderbilt. Three, they lost three to one. Who knows what would have happened if they'd have played the next day? Uh, it, it, it's just it, it, it was heartbreaking for me to see something like that happen. I was I was I was literally angry for for what had happened to them. It was just awful, yeah. just awful. Um, yeah. How do you like the series that, that starts tonight? You got you got such familiarity with with both clubs. Um, how do you like this matchup? Would it be awful if I said I don't really care? It's <laughs> <laughs> like we said, I love your honesty, man. Your honesty, your honesty is fantastic, man. Good luck. <laughs> Will you watch? I, I got, will, will, will you watch? I got, will you watch? I did. No, nah, I got something to do, man. I don't know what it'll be. But... I love it. I love it, man. Well, Coach, will, will you get on Twitter now? Will you, will you Will you be on social media? Will you get like a Twitter account? <laughs> hey, I hadn't even thought about that, Jordy. I don't know. That'd be good. Uh, what's well, th- I don't know. Will be, I don't, will, let me ask you this. Will people be nice to me now? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if, you, if you treat them with this much honesty, yeah, how can yes. they not be? Um, <laughs> so who's the first major leaguer you're going to see? Who's Who's the first game? What's the first game oh, you want to wow. see? Well, you know, I was thinking about um, going to Philadelphia this weekend because it's the first time the Nolas will compete against the Nolas. Aaron and 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 uh, the Padres play the Phillies, but unfortunately, Austin is on the injured list, and Aaron won't be pitching. Hey, did you see what Aaron Nola did the he other day? He crushed that ball, Coach. He crushed that no, thing. No, I thought Aaron Nola struck out ten consecutive batters against the Mets. He tied a record that was 51 years old. Tom Seaver had wow. struck out 10 consecutive batters 51 years ago. I remember watching that game, wow. all right? And Aaron Nola struck out 10 consecutive batters the other day against the uh, New York Mets. Uh, but anyway, I had it on my calendar that um, the, the Phillies were playing the Padres this weekend in Philadelphia. And you know who called me the other day to congr- you know congratulate me on my retirement? Dave Dombrowski. Dave Dombrowski is the president of the Philadelphia Phillies. And ironically, Dave Dombrowski was a 25-year-old farm director of the Chicago White Sox who released me from the White Sox uh, back in the, back in April of ma- or March of 1980. And um, he, ca- he, he called me to... Uh, to uh, to uh, well, we didn't have cell phones back then, okay. <laughs> but but, uh, but he, yeah, no, he, we have each other's cell phone numbers now. But um, 
he called me and I told him I was thinking about coming up and he told me, well, Nola, Aaron Nola was not scheduled to pitch this weekend. But unfortunately, we had a tragedy in our LSU baseball family recently where Mikhail Hilliard's father uh, passed away. And the funeral is this Saturday. So I won't be going away this weekend. I have to be here for the funeral. Wow. So, yeah, very, very, very sad uh, event that happened. Um, and so every, I want everybody to remember Mikhail Hilliard and his family. Um, it, just an unbelievable thing. A great man. Keith uh, Hilliard was one of – Keith and Lisa Hilliard are one of the best set of parents that I've dealt with in my entire coaching career. And Mikhail is one of the finest young men that I've coached in my coaching career. And Unfortunately, his father uh, passed away in a tragic accident. And um, anyway, he'll be put to rest this Saturday, and I'll be spending the day with the Hilliard family. Yeah, the LSU baseball fraternity with C.J. Harris earlier this season, and, yeah. and now Mr. Hilliard, uh, rest in peace, and our, our thoughts and prayers with them. Uh, thank you for the, the the time this morning, Coach. So many uh, candid memories. Uh, we, we do have one from a, a listener who, who was curious, just from your point of view. Matthew wanted to know on the way out, asking Coach, how special is Dylan Cruz coaching him for a season? You, you, you've coached so many superstars. Uh, I guess not where he fits into the pecking order, but just the potential of Cruz looking down the line. Oh, uh, well, let me tell you, he's, Dylan's got all the talent in the world. He's got, he can take it as far as he wants to take it. He can, he can be a big leaguer and a superstar in the big leagues. And, uh, you know, he's got two more years here at LSU and he's got some things he needs to work on. He knows that, but, uh, he loves the game, and I think he'll work at it. We've got some really special players in the program, and I think I think Jay's already gonna got plans to bring some more special ones in. So I think that the future for the program as a whole is going to be very bright. And uh, Trey Morgan is another player that I'll tell you what he Trey Trey has big league written all over him as well. He's a special kid that I love dearly, and it's going to be a shame. It's going to be sad for me not to coach those kids, but I'm going to tell you they're. They're going to be a lot of fun to watch, and I'm going to be watching them uh, very closely. Coach, were, were you Jaden Hill away this season? Pardon me? Were you Pardon J- me? Were, were you Jaden Hill away this season, do you believe, from playing in, in this tournament? I mean, were you a power arm away? This roster feels like you're close. It, it sure, uh, it, it's hard to say for sure, but um, it would have been interesting to see if Jaden Hill would have kept moving forward and improving and stayed healthy, what, we, what could have happened, but it's very hard to predict what would have happened. I, I, I'm not going to make an excuse like that, but it was just a shame when we lost Jaden. That certainly had an effect. But, you know, um, you'd like to have your best players available, that's for sure. And Jaden was a special talent. He may still go in the first round even after the injury. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 16 seasons at LSU, uh, 40 uh, in his career, uh, so decorated. Uh, so classy and, and, and always, uh, as always, the honesty this morning was great. Thank you, as, uh, thank you for the time. I know today will be interesting for LSU baseball. Uh, thanks for a couple of minutes, Coach. Okay, Jordy, my pleasure. Yes, Good sir. to be with you. Yes, sir. Here is uh, Coach Maneri checking in uh, this morning here after his meeting with Jay Johnson yesterday uh, and some of the thoughts there. Uh, Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, not his two favorite programs in the league. <laughs> I got to imagine if Arkansas is still alive with his buddy uh, up there, he's probably watching, but I'm not interested. Uh, not interested. <laughs> no, what, if I, I got, what if I tell you I'm not watching? Would I you believe things, me? I got things to do. Yeah, I like that. Can we just take a minute, though, to acknowledge that I just shed real emotional tears over an LSU coach? That was that was good stuff. He's candid. Yeah. That's that who he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but it me. was very, yes. Me. That was good. It was very um, real. But, I mean, that was emotional. Uh, RMB Please. Builders, Rhett Bourgeois and the crew, rmb-builders.com. Remember, they can help you with a total overhaul construction project. Uh, they are commercially licensed, so if you need some help uh, around the office or around the business, they can help you out with that as well. Uh, Rhett Bourgeois and his crew, uh, Katie and I can speak firsthand of this. He helped her uh, through her uh, project at, at her house, and now he's helping me through uh, and through the uh, the flood remodeling that's happening over at, uh, at my house. And it's very organized. It's very detailed. It's very easy to follow. Uh, and uh, he takes all the headaches out, man. It's, it's, it's easy work to, uh, to work alongside. Rhett Bourgeois and his crew. So if you need a handyman, if you need reconstruction, if you want a custom-built home today, let RMB Builders, rmb-builders.com is where you can find them online. Uh, let them get you fixed up today. Uh, Rhett Bourgeois and the crew. We'll take a small break, be back here on the Jordy Collada Show. About 30 minutes from now, 25 minutes from now, we will talk to Mikey Romero, who is uh, the headliner now for this LSU baseball recruiting class. 
number one shortstop in the state of California. I saw Jordan Thompson send him a tweet after he committed. So a couple of California kids (laughs) uh, reconnecting. We'll talk to uh, Romero about his relationship with uh, with Thompson and what his thoughts are of LSU baseball as uh, he flipped the commitment from uh, from Arizona to LSU immediately when Jay Johnson got the job. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll ask him why. Coming up here in 30 minutes. Good stuff from Paul Maneri. We'll be back here on the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Are you self employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oaks Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me. Jordy at JordyColladaShow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at JordyColladaShow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022. Four eight five eight zero two two is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at one fifteen twenty two Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location.
All right, shout out to Blake A. Bear over at uh, A. Bear's Lawn and Maintenance. Says he's going to be making out today. Rain been keeping him down. If uh, if you're on the list, he's coming to get you as uh, he's trying to make up for a lot of uh, the cuts that he missed last week. It sounds like a serial with all killer. The, uh, with all the rain last week. He's coming to he's get you. Yeah, he's coming, all the cuts he's he coming to kill your grass. Yeah. I mean, you grow it all yeah, mowing. T- tell your grass feeling confident above the knees right now. He's getting whacked today. Blake, uh, Blake Bear and the crew will be there. Uh, also, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Bladder. To yes, Lloyd. Lloyd just peed Sheesh, for like four solid minutes. minutes. That's three minutes. Three minutes. Holding that since that Alexandria That was the trip. Alexandria <laughs> drive. I held it all the way in. 75, you can go 85. Did you leave this morning? Oh, yeah. 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 You know how we yeah, go. Yeah, right, bro. <laughs> just get up and get out of here by four. Get up and get out. Yeah, man. Uh, good stuff from Palmineri. That that was as good a Palmineri as I, yeah, I think yeah. I've ever heard. I'm I feel like so I just sad. listened to like a movie. Yeah. I like know. I went through all the emotions. He I'm laughed. So he cried. He did. He, the little, Stories. A little, a little visceral maybe hate for something. <laughs> yeah, Don't geez. think he, uh, if we leave between the lines, I think he still wants to coach. Yes. I would just say still Put it on the poll. Yeah. Give me a poll question. Do you think Paul, you, you, do you think Maneri coaches again? I yes don't. or no? But I think he has I don't either. I don't. I don't know, but I think when you asked him that, he's like, if I had a Jaden Hill coming back. Now, if you, you ask him, does Paul Maneri want to coach again? That's a 100% right. yes. I think you, that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. he wants to. Yeah, he definitely wants to. Because when he looks at that roster, he's just... Like they said in the chat, did <laughs> next surgery Jack away. Bunker, Jackson, yeah. morning nerds. <laughs> uh, Chris Jarrell is, uh, he's on one. He thinks that, that, that Benary is, is going to coach. And, and if you're going wow. and judging by what you heard in that interview, I mean, it sounds Not like quite dead yet. he wants more. He, he wants a little more. Um, Do you think he views the one Natty as a failure? Like if you could candidly ask, I mean, he's as candid as they get, but... I feel like he thinks he should have had two at least. Oh, I think he definitely feels like he should have had more. I mean, if you talk to him about that that Bregman team and then the the Papierski Dykeman. That's oh, 2017. Zach yeah, Watson. Yeah, yeah. That that team. Oh, God. How did they get beat? Um, so I, th- I definitely think he he feels like he. I mean, it's it's what we always talk about with the Drew Brees Sean Payton right. tenure. That that to me is a that's a failure. I mean, right? Isn't it a failure? Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're that good and that good decorated and your reputation is of what those two guys are, I mean, that that was almost like football soulmates yeah. as far as a per- play yeah, caller the perfect wedding and, and you a never quarterback had a baby. and you just one time get you, the one kid. But you, and, and the more surprising thing about Peyton and Breeze to me, and I know that they had the circumstances is that they only went to the Super Bowl one time. Like, yeah, but don't you think they get a pass because of how it played out? I like, think, obviously, I, I the Rams think, game oh, is... A, the that, Rams that, game... That the and Rams then the way game, that Super Bowl played out, it's like the Saints would have won that Super Bowl. It, it's scary to think about. I mean, it, it, it's heart-wrenching Even to think about. Even the Vikings about. twice. I know. Right, I right. know. I, I mean, just... But, but see, to me, um, the Minnesota Miracle is, is one uh, that we kind of get lost. That was, that was the divisional round. Yeah. That was not the NFC that was not the, the, yeah, the championship. To, I mean, you, I mean if, if you, you remember win. the atmosphere in Philadelphia the next weekend, and that was the, 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 the year that Philly right. went on to beat New England with the Philly special, I'm not giving them a Super Bowl berth I still have right no, there. Yeah, I'm right. still not scared I, of Nick I, Foles I, for some reason. I'm like, with you on the, 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 the Nolan no call. I mean, yeah. they, get to, they get to that Super Bowl and they win. Uh, oh, I mean, the, the, way, the, the, the San Francisco in 2011. That might be their best yeah. team. That was their best team. That they couldn't they couldn't handle a young... Alex Smith bootleg. Alex Smith. I mean, couldn't Vernon guard Davis. Vernon Davis. Just, it was... The, the, way, the amount of times that they left it on the doorstep. Sean Payton kind of gets a pass for not He does. <laughs> I mean, for as a big of a jerk as he is. Right. And treats right. people with... You know, like a lot of disrespect. A lot of fu. And I no. mean, he's even got it within his own peer group. I mean, who was it that he looked across? Was it Minnesota that he was looking? No, across it was Atlanta. He was like, "You're choking." Yeah, he was You're looking at Atlanta. Super Bowl, like choking him out. Um, one Super Bowl show, I'd kind of keep it quiet over here, bro. You know what I mean? I wouldn't bark too loud. I know, but I love that he does. Uh, so do I. I do too. I do too. I mean, I, I do. If we're going to bark up the, 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 the Vitello it. tree that we wanted, right. then we got to right. have Sean right. Payton's back a little but, bit. But Peyton and Breeze, Unbelievable. Are, are, you with me? are you riding with me on this? Failure? I would say yes. I would say failure in the terms of it, it seems like it could have been three. Yeah. Yes. Much less we only got one. I mean, like Duncan's book, Jeff Duncan's book is a great read. 
And if nothing else, it shows you how like harmonic those guys the same were language. by year two Damn. being together. Damn. Like yeah. it didn't take them a decade to figure it out. Right. Like it was like in free Symbotica. agency when they met each other, like Peyton looked at Loomis and was like, whatever we got to do, right? whatever we got to do, Joe, get this guy. Joe Burrow, Joe Brady. Joe Burrow, Joe Brady. Perfect, uh, a perfect uh, comparison. Match. A perfect comparison. Um, that type of style. And, and look what you do when you put Brady and Burrow together for one year. Right. You win a championship. Greatest you put those time. guys. You put those guys together for 15 and you only made it to the game once? I got to imagine behind closed doors, even those two would tell you. Oh, they're punching air. Uh, bro, I mean. <laughs> I'm frustrated thinking about it. Imagine how, being them. Yes. I, I just. I how much know. do you think Joe Brady would give up to get Joe Burrow to huh. the Panthers? Like, is Christian he in, McCaffrey. Is, is he, yeah, is he in there? You're <laughs> yes. like, give two first-round picks and Christian McCaffrey, and I can win you a Super Bowl. Um, I mean, yeah, that's it's unfeasible in, in the NFL. But uh, if I was Cincinnati, I would have definitely hired him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would have definitely hired him. I mean, just whatever. I mean, the fact that he wasn't the offensive coordinator, because they had a chance to you make that happen. You would think that they did, yeah. I mean, why you know not? I mean? Everybody, like, he was open he was open season on, on uh, Mr. Brady, Coach Brady. If I was, <laughs> if, if, if Burrow was my guy like he was for Cincinnati when they knew Cincinnati had the number one pick by the Alabama game, right? you know what I mean, of, of Joe's senior season, and they had to look at that game and say, okay, that stamped it. He's our guy. That's who we want. And you know what else? I'm hiring their play caller, too. Yeah, who's the guy cussing I mean, in the like, booth going, they can't effing stop us? Yes, yeah, right. I want him also. That you can right. tell Sean Payton is, he's a little agitated that he lost. Like, Joe Brady, you can tell digs at Sean Payton. Like, his comment after the national championship game when he was like, Mickey and I were looking across the press box and wondering, is that young Joe Brady over there calling oh. the play? And you can tell Brady was like, hey, Sean... Bro, don't Coming play me. Ass. Don't play me like I'm I'm running your coffee anymore, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Like, don't play. Don't talk to me like that. Man. And I think Sean Payton is. I know this in the segment that we drew out at all, but I know that <laughs> I think that Sean Payton is seeing that and he wants to put him down just because he's a little. He's a little he's nervous. That's what I'm yes. saying. That's what I'm saying. Like he can. He knows that he's like, oh, the guy from the like, you know, whatever mm. staff. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're gonna have him. He's like, yeah, Whoa. like behind, like <laughs> fellas, we we got a little we concerned. We just lost a cat. Um. Lewis Caro asks uh, a question that we were talking a little bit about uh, in the uh, in the break in between Maneri and, and him coming back. Was Maneri forced out? Um, look, I, I think that that obviously, um, if you listen to that interview, Paul uh, was was very transparent, and we were applauding him for his honesty uh, to his face. Uh, had, it said, I, "I was not forced out. It was my decision." Um, but, but then, you know, towards the end of the interview, he, he started laying out what that roster looks like and, 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 and in the description of, of talking about uh, last Monday, waking up for the first time in, in nearly 40 years without, without a ballpark and without a team to go coach, um, you know, he was drawn to emotion. I mean, he started crying within the interview. Um, and it, it definitely opens the door, opens the thought of, Okay, well, I mean, bro, I mean, if you if you if you if you see it and you want it so bad, then then why don't you come back for it? Makes year? me miss him a little bit. I know it was his, it felt like bro, it was his time, but that I like, never missed him. I, I never I never him. missed him more than his 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 press conference. Yes, his, his press conference. I yeah. I left there thinking, man, he still that, and that's what breaks his equipment. He still has it. He's so sweet, and I hate that he feels like if he gets on Twitter, people are going to be mean to him. That was a sad. That was well, that was definitely that was an opening Aww. for Tiger dropping. Yeah. I did. I just I, I lost it. it. I lost. He's I, crying. I was he's talking, laughing. How do you I have was this talking conversation? A big game going in, and I was going to ask him about it, and that was a huge like window interview. that just oh. like, hey man, if you want to jump in, it's it wide a, open. It was a fastball down the middle, and I just uh, we're so we're talking to Paul Maneri here on the Jordy Galata <laughs> Show. We're drawn to you daily by Go Chevrolet. I'm over here, Coach. Tell me about Jaden Hill away, right? Coach, y'all were right there. <laughs> um, what a so sweetheart. I, you know what? Where would he go? To, that I, can't I, go to another day. I definitely think that there is a there is a conspiracy theory out there that's got legs that makes you think that there was probably somebody that said, "Hey, Paul." Yeah. Yeah. After this year, we can do the we can do the the, the retirement. We can do the resignation, or we can it can get a little messy. It, it, it potentially could be a little messy. 
So we'll, we'll give you... And that speaks to his character more than anything. We'll give you the to opportunity to, to control this for a couple of months, but then if you get past this deadline, we're going to have to control it. I agree with so you. That, yeah, yeah it'll, get, it'll get messy. And mm-hmm. it could get messy. And do you want to, in the same season that you win 1,500, do you want to have this... The public blowback. This on, on, on there as well. So um, I, I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's far-fetched but that wasn't a man that was lacking passion, is all I'm saying. Yeah, you could tell yeah. that he, when you talked about baseball, even talking about the Vanderbilt and the North Carolina State, like that pissed, like it pissed him yeah. off. Yeah. Like he's like, I'm, I'm visibly so he's upset. Angry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you could tell that he still has that coach's mindset. So Definitely I don't know. Does. It's, I don't wouldn't. Definitely not. I don't know where he would go. But. I don't either. And, and you know what? I think that right now, like he said, he knew was going to be the toughest part, like in between the be, coach being announced, in between the first yeah. pitch going out. Like, that's all going to be a weird You're talking scenario. to a divorcee. But, uh, yes, and, and, you know, the further you get down the line, and then I think the more he thinks, because people have told me that have close to him that the, the dad stuff, his dad passing away, and you could hear yeah. he referenced his dad in, in that interview. That was the breaking. Right. Um, yeah. That was really kind of the, the, the door that opened for him that said, you know what, this, because, this could be real in the next couple of years. Like, I could leave the game just because I don't have my guy. I don't have my, my, my guy that I can talk to about that gets it, that, that, that was there for me as a coach, as a player, and has sat in this dugout next to me and given me great life lessons. That just does not exist anymore. And the 1 a.m. phone all, call on the bus is gone. We all have that relationship in our life, whether it, it, it's around our work, profession, or something personally that we care about. But we have that person, and if you don't have them, things are different. There's different feelings. There's different ways that you view things. There's different things. I, I can imagine the dugout's a very lonely place right. for pulmonary because it's a, a, a place of great memories and great feelings for him that just brings back, and when you can't, have that at your fingertips like it always has been it's got to change the way that you look at the diamond i I just think that and and for him to 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 try to put on the uniform and go do that at a place like 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 kansas like les miles did after his lsu career i just don't see him doing that because i think that the lsu baseball community is really gonna wrap their arms around him in this part of his career. Yeah. I mean, you saw it in the video. Like you know? the video was like that 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 rubber stamp of Paul. You're one of us. You're in the fraternity of LSU mm-hmm. baseball greats. Yes. And, and so, why would you try to, in his mind, like if he still wants to coach, LSU made it that much harder for him to leave and go do something else. But after that happened, whatever, he's the changing of the guard to Jay Johnson. You have Skip there. It's just all of this big production. It's like, how could I go coach it? Long Beach State. And I, and I think that you will see Skip and Paul Maneri sitting in those two seats right next to the dugout. And I don't – I think that, uh, you know, and I, I'd imagine – I don't know, but I'd imagine that Jay Johnson would invite that. You know what I mean? You have to. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're looking at, at two legendary college baseball figures that are supporting you and sitting there as a resource for you. Um, I don't know why Paul would go chase – a regional it somewhere that else, fire bro. was still in the belly. It does. It absolutely does. But I, I don't think that real coaches never lose that. Yeah. You, know, you, yeah. you start talking. I mean, you get Skip on the phone. Right. I mean, he'll start right. talking to you about pitching moves in, in 91, or you'll ask him about something in 2018 that Paul did off the record, and he'll still competitively speak to you like, oh, I don't know what he was thinking. You know what I mean? Right. It There's just, a reason he, I mean, sits get, behind, get, he sits behind right, home plate right. every game. Skip get John, is right I mean, there Get John watching. Brady going. Yes. You know, get John Brady going on basketball. I mean, it, it, it takes them a blink of an eye to get back in it. I Are mean, you, like, it's it is right there all the time. Are it you is right there. if you're Jay Johnson and no. Skip and Paul are sitting behind you, though, like, while you're coaching, especially your first year? If I'm Jay Johnson and, and the way that Jay Johnson has handled this, and this is just my impression, and I'm just telling you how I interpret that Jay Johnson would accept this because – I kind of relate to what he's talking about, his mentality. He's an undersized guy. He's always thought that he was bigger than he was. He thought that he was going to be, you know, he knew what he wanted to be. He a set out. winning trophy. But he, he knew he was going to be a coach. He set out to do that, and now he's coaching LSU baseball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's, a, that, that, that is a, that's a goal setter. That's a guy that said, I want this, and went and got it. I respect the hell out of that. Mm. And for you to get to this place and look back and see the two alphas, looking over your shoulder that are no threat. I know no, nobody's a threat back there. They're just here to support and be a great resource to you. Man, 
that would be a great over the shoulder head nod and wink before every first pitch. You know what I mean? Just kind of like it's great to see you, fellas. You almost have to lean into it a little bit and be like, yeah, dude, I ask him all the time what I should yeah, do. Like this yeah. is I don't understand this yeah, landscape because I'm not from here. Why would I not ask Skip Bertman and Paul Maneri how to navigate? And I think Louisiana once baseball. that question comes across to Maneri, it's all open. Text, it's and he's done looking for another job. Because he'll be comfortable in the sense of, I'll just sit here and, and, I'm and coaching, consult. coaching, essentially. Yeah. And just consult. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I don't have to get the backlash of the batting order or who I, I pulled in the seventh. It doesn't matter. He's going to love Tiger dropping. He's gonna, and he's going <laughs> to love that role. It's exactly what John Brady is right now. Yeah. If you remember John Brady's personality and everybody that meets him today that knew him then, look at you with an eyes like, what in the hell happened to this guy? <laughs> You know what I mean? He was he, piss and vinegar. He was all of it. He didn't shake hands. He didn't sign autographs. He didn't take pictures. He didn't do that stuff routinely. He would do it at times, but he didn't accept that part of the job as something that gets you paid. That's a bottom line figure, man. That's something that, that, that goes into the contract. It, it may not be written down or be said, but it's understood that you should be at Simone Augustus's last game. F that. I don't need to be. I'm watching film. Like, no, bro, f- do it for 30 minutes. Got to show face. But just didn't do it because he didn't get it. He didn't understand it then. He was so captivated by basketball and making LSU a winner and trying to prove people wrong in his life that told him he couldn't do something. But, but when he got to a point where that pressure was gone, the respect was there of his basketball knowledge, and now he's got the relationship with the head coach in the program where he's always a phone call away for advice, consultation, any type of brain-picking session that Will Wade wants. He never hesitates to pick up the phone and call John Brady, and all this stuff is public news. This isn't breaking here. Both those guys have told you that. Wade more than Brady has because Brady just feels uncomfortable saying it publicly. But Will Wade puts a ton of stock into John Brady's basketball mind. And John Brady for that is a lovable figure and a stress-free dude. And not just because of that, but when you talk to him about basketball, he'll sit down at the table, pull up a chair with you, and talk to you for an hour. I mean, if you run into Brady in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, wherever you are, and ask him, hey, coach, if Darius Davis comes back, what's that mean for LSU? You, 45 minutes later, you, you feel like you're going to get a Christmas card from the guy. Are you going to send him one of yours? <laughs> and I think Maneri will find that existence and find that deep breath of just exhale, man. The last 16 years had to be stress a, a hell of a ride. Stressful at times, and now it's time to get off the tracks and just hang out and watch, man. And enjoy it. Enjoy it. And it sounds like he will. It does. It's, it sounds like he's, he's got yeah. that in him. He's got that in him. It's just going to be emotional. But he's still, it's, I mean, he got knocked out last week mm-hmm. with a good team. You know what I mean? That's what I think it is, is that he realizes how good that LSU baseball team is going to be next year. And he's just like, damn it, if you give me what I could run it. It's it's almost Drew Brees, Sean Payton. It's Drew Brees, like, if I can get right But don't you think Payton and Brees could play the one more year every season? You could play it it every year. We could could be here five years from now. Yes, we We could be be playing the same game of checkers (laughs) forever. We could be Brett Favre. We'd be Brett Favre. And I think that's kudos to Paul Benary to realize, (laughs) like, it's just not worth it. Yeah, I'm not playing these games anymore, man. Because I can. We can do this all day. I'm close. Yeah, right. I'll always be close because I'm good at what I, mean, I do. Think if Jaden Hill makes the decision to come back if you're Maneri. Like, you almost pick up the phone and say, hey, Jay, one more year, bro. Bench coach. <laughs> yeah, right. Just give me, just, give me, a, just give me an associate care. head coach gig, bro. Let me get a ring, man. Let me rub my forehead on the stop down the, down the top <laughs> step. <laughs> um, so, look, I, I, I think that Maneri, that was good to hear from him. That was great to hear from him. That was visceral. Um, and I, I think that he is in the right place. I think it's time. it was time for LSU baseball to move on, and it was time for Paul Maneri to find that comfort zone and enjoy his 40 years of service, man. I mean, 
Go watch Aaron and Austin Nola play in Philly as their college head coach. Go to How Augusta. cool, bro. Yeah, go cool. do the thing. Go to How the Kentucky cool. Derby. All the things you said you wanted to do, go do them. Kevin Gaussman is lighting MLB up right now. Go watch your former ace in some big stadium and have full access. And, and miss your flight coming home. You know what I mean? And you who got, cares? You got carte blanche to do who whatever cares? you want. Who cares? Go watch Bregman play a big series in Houston. I mean, j- just whatever. Go up to Yankee Stadium and watch LeMay you go. I mean, just think about what you can go. Like, bro. I'm I mean, done. I can call the, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies president is calling me, asking me if I want to come up and watch NOLA play. You're damn right. You mind my kid, my grandson come? Not at all. Go send a jet. Got you three passes. Sweet. You know what I mean? Like, Get a sweet. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> staying at the Windsor, or staying at the at, at the Ritz Carlton, and 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 hanging out in Philly with 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 full access to the Phillies organization, and not the stress of who Nolan Kane is on the road recruiting. Or should we pull him in the six while he's watching? He's like, I would take him. Are out we gonna here, get you know? a lefty? It, yeah, <laughs> it's just all the stresses that it's you're gone. on the plane riding up to Philly, thinking, man, I can't wait to watch Aaron Nola pitch. But I'm really thinking about who's gonna be my who's gonna be my offensive catcher next year. Who's gonna be the guy that I can I can I, I can get some production from offensively from the catching stuff? Where's the next Papirski? Well, all that stuff. Who cares, bro? Who it's cares? Ours. It's got to be a great. I don't know if he's he's close. That's what I'm saying. He's on the precipice of realizing how great retirement's gonna be for him because he still obviously wants to win one more. And I think that's what the crux of this whole conversation is. But once he realizes that, like. Dude, it's over. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. You, you won one. You got it. You did the thing. Uh, so we're going to talk to Mikey Romero here in a couple of minutes, and we will get some firsthand accounts on Jay Johnson. Obviously, Romero thinks Johnson is great because as soon as Johnson was announced to LSU, he flipped his commitment. Do your research on Romero, and this cat is a stud. Number one shortstop in California. Number five overall shortstop in the country, according to Perfect Game. Uh, he'll be right on the fence, it seems like. Uh, of, of getting him on campus. He could be a high-round pick for, uh, for Major League Baseball, uh, but his commitment right now is to LSU. We'll talk to him in a couple of minutes. The NBA playoffs is, uh, are rolling on. As last night, uh, Chris Middleton uh, had a uh, career-high tying night as he had 38 points, had 20 in the, the fourth, fourth quarter, bro. Yeah. Um, Death by ref? With a couple of, uh, of just daggers. I mean, Middleton hit some well, he, big, he big outs- shots. Outscored the Hawks. He outscored the Hawks. Yeah. He You're talking about uh, Trey Young rolling his ankle yes, on the referee? Yes, the rest This is yeah. going to be a storyline to watch out for. He's got an MRI this morning on that ankle. And as, he, had uh, the big, he had, like, the baby braces on, like the what you put on kids that, like, can't walk just yeah. right. He yeah. did. Yeah, no, he did. And he had 35 <laughs> last night. Um, but but like I, like we said, he was he was slowed down in the, in the fourth because – uh, coming off of a jump shot, he backpedaled, and when he stepped back, he he stepped on ref the, the the referee's yeah, foot yeah. and just rolled it. Uh, I mean, it very much looked inconsequential. I mean, the referee. I don't know if he's playing some games here. It was our guy. Uh, uh, who uh, was Tim, Donaghy. Tim Donaghy. <laughs> <laughs> I got the under in this one, Cubs. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, my bad, Trey. Sorry about that, man. I got Chris Middleton to go Sorry off on the board. That. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and, but uh, Giannis had thirty three. Game four tomorrow night, uh, closeout series or closeout opportunity for Phoenix tonight, tonight. the Clippers. So good. Crazy. Well, I'll be watching baseball no tonight. I don't know. I have a, I don't I, know. My question is, has the NBA outgrown the court size? Is the court um, too small? Yes, I, we've been debating. I debated this. Um, well, you've had this conversation? I've had this conversation what? because I <laughs> saw – I saw I saw LeBron James catch an outlet pass in New Orleans one night and catch it on his free throw line, <laughs> and it took him five dribbles to get to the other rim. Think about that. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, say that out loud. I mean, uh, he, he, five dribbles from free throw line to rim to dunk to rim, yeah, to yak yeah. to a tomahawk <laughs> right. behind his head, just rim shatter. But everybody's yeah. not a freak like that, so does it make sense? No, they all but, are freaks uh, like that. About eighty yeah, percent of them are. Yeah. I mean, like, you have to, like the Chris, freak of the freak. Chris Middle, Giannis could catch an outlet pass and probably and get rim to rim in three steps. Yeah. And it, it's it's. The length of the court is one thing, but the the corner three the, the point. width, the fact that you can only fit your foot right in the the corner three. And Giannis may not be able to. It. Yeah, I mean Giannis I mean, wears Giannis, Giannis wears a nineteen. I mean, think yeah. about That's KD's insane. game winner that he thought was a game winner. He's like, my foot's too big. Right, yeah. like I'm too. I was just a little cl- too close to so the line. Ninety four feet in in uh, length. What's it with twenty seven feet? 
Let me check. Let me you check. should know. You run the Gashers. Huh? It's 54 in football. I know yeah, that. Yeah, it's 54. I'll just, boosh, boosh, boosh. I'll just run it. Um, but uh, but obviously, I, mean, I mean, the biggest takeaway from my mind is who invented the game and who was playing it when it started sure. and what's evolved Absolutely. to now right. is right. that right. they're right. 6'10 freak shows. You had no idea that yeah. a point guard was going to be 6'9. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like Bob Cousy is not out there anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's 91.86 feet long and 49.21 feet wide. Wow, so 90 by 50. So um, it just needs, in my opinion, it needs to be widened a little bit. I, yeah, you can't, I can't. The corner three is the most valuable shot right. in basketball, and you can't shoot it sometimes. Uh, and the Pelicans' job is still open, and Portland has screwed up their coaching search tremendously Dumb. and hired uh, Chauncey Billups, went all in, and had Becky Hammond on the uh, – they had her ready to introduce. Yeah. In fact, I think that the owner, like, came out and said, I yeah, believe she, Becky Hammond's going to be a great hire. Out, she came out and said if uh, – like, if it was my choice, Becky Hammond will be the head coach right now. Well, and Hammond's a, choice? Hammond's a finalist, and then yeah. it comes down to, to her, and, her and Billups. And, and last night, they give Chauncey Billups a five-year contract with Portland. So Billups off the market and Becky Hammond back on the market. And if I'm New Orleans, Gail Benson and David Griffin, don't screw this up. You have to hire Don't Becky overthink Hammond. it, bro. Go hire her yesterday. Like, make this happen, man. She is without question. To, she was the best candidate two years ago. Right. Uh, she was the best candidate when he came in and he was talking about what he was going to do with, with Alvin Gentry. I was saying, bro, blow it up if you're even thinking about it and just go commit to Hammond right now. Because to me, she has been a part of a great organization with San Antonio. If you've been doing any type of, of research on her, that Pop's been away from the game a lot yeah. over the last couple of years. Right. He seems right. checked out. Like he is very much checked out. He's Phil, ja- he's Phil Jackson late into the Lakers thing where like he didn't make road trips. Yeah. Like he doesn't go on road trips. He doesn't do back to back games. And when that happens, she runs the organization. Right. I mean, she runs the huddles. She runs everything that goes into the day to day ops. Everything that has gone in to building an NBA franchise or running an NBA franchise from a coaching standpoint, she has done. She started a video coordinator. She's worked her way up to Eric a, a, a Yes, yeah. she is Eric Spolstra. And she's a superstar of a basketball player. She's respected within the circle. And to me, you've all you got to think outside of the box in New Orleans. You, you have got to, you, you got to do something. You got to do something different. It can't be Stan Van Gundy and it can't be Chauncey Billups. You know what I mean? I, you got to think outside of the box of, of, of people like Becky Hammond who are, are going to be uh, more of a polarizing. Uh, a, yeah, polarizing. Media will grasp that. But just inside of the walls, nobody in uh, the other 30 franchises, they, they, can't, they can't compete with that because you're, you're thinking a little bit outside of the box and you're in a market that nobody else can really compare to. In this New Orleans Gulf Coast, where you've got a couple of opportunities to to peel away fans like the Saints do. I mean, you go to you drive the Gulf. I just drove the Gulf Coast last week. You can get Saints merchandise from here to to, to right. Tallahassee. Right. Yeah, you can. You know what I mean? Anywhere you stop, there's going to be Saints memorabilia merchandise. Pelicans should have that same type of presence. And the thing that hurts the most with the Pelicans is if they, as if they were good. That this state would wrap their hands around huh. them. That's huh. what that's what Louisiana huh. does. Yeah, some we, sort of production. Yeah, just be good and or, right. or try you, to be good. And you've good. already yeah. got eighty percent of the equation taken care of because Zion if you got 80%. if you got a winner, they'll definitely be there. But if you're winning with a superstar, <laughs> they will marry you. They will make Zion Drew Brees. I mean, they were, yeah, look, look look how Brees walks around the city for the last fifteen years. Now right. I know that he had the, the the deal at the end, but I mean. Zion is the king of the city. Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, but look at how they did the passing of the torch between Drew Brees to Zion with the signed jersey. Yes. And, like, in they, the French they Quarter. Like, yes, they were trying to very much make this a thing. Yeah. And it's like, we but then, then the Pelicans botched the hire, and it's just like, all right, we're back to square one, and you forget right. about all of the cool things that happened leading up right. to Zion being the number one pick. So it's it's so frustrating to, to be a part of, but it can be fixed. And like we said with... Look at the Atlanta Hawks. They made a they made right. a coaching change. Yeah, mid-season. halfway through the year, and they're in the Eastern. They're, he's still they're, the interim coach. He's still he doesn't. They yes, they haven't even named him the coach yet. He's in the Eastern Conference Finals with a two-one. With with yeah. the, with Nate McMillan, who said, "I don't want to be the coach," and he's like, "Well, you are now. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, you've lost right. to the Eastern Conference Finals." Uh, so the Clippers can get closed out tonight. Kawhi Leonard duped the Clippers. Yeah, Threw I me mean, once. 
fool me twice. He's pissed off at the medical staff is with the going, Clippers. Is he going to be a Laker? He's not even making the road trip. Yeah, he's not even going to He's not even Phoenix. going to Phoenix for the game. He was I watching mean, in the suite. It's Bro. his seventh straight How about game? Mike Breed with the... Uh, yeah. Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Leonard's going crazy. <laughs> yes. and he's just he's like, just a, he's looking at basketball like he doesn't know what the sport is when he's watching. Right, he's like, right. How are you so good at it and so unentertained by it? Uh, all right, stick around. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to Mikey Romero here on the, uh, on the other side as uh, Jay Johnson committed to LSU last week. And uh, Mikey Johnson flipped his commitment from Arizona to LSU. We'll ask him why coming up here in a couple of minutes on the Jordy Collada Show. Remember, daily, we're brought to you by Falaya Real Estate. And if there is one... Uh, Falaya Real Estate is booming right now. I mean, my guy is everywhere. He was at a uh, he was at a Mandeville trade show uh, on on Thursday, setting up there, letting everybody know about the services uh, that Falaya can offer. Uh, his close rate right now is is off the charts. Uh, he's making people money. If if you want to sell your house, and if you are in to do it yourself, uh, selling your house, and you want to save thousands of dollars. Uh, welcome to Empowered Real Estate, Falaya Real Estate. Uh, our good friend Barrett Blondo uh, has changed the game with the way that real estate is being sold here in, in Louisiana. He's got customers all over. He had somebody call in from Shreveport, said that he heard it here on the Jordy Collada Show. Make sure and let him know uh, that if you use his service, where you get it from. But uh, if you are looking to sell your house, if you're looking to make money selling your house, if you're looking to do it a little bit different, then you need to take the Falaya experience, and you can find out about it. You can take a virtual tour uh, online at falaya.com um, uh, where they offer virtual tours uh, and push-button offers, and they also have a great app. Uh, download the app today at uh, Google and Apple. Uh, but the Falaya app, Barrett Blondo and Falaya Real Estate, uh, they're killing it right now. We appreciate their, uh, their support here on the Jordy Collada Show. We'll be right back. Mikey Romero stopping in here, the number one shortstop out of the state of California uh, coming to LSU. Uh, we'll ask him if he makes it to campus here next on the Jordy Collada Show. Are you self-employed? Then you need to learn about Angel Oak's Home Loans Bank Statement Program that they're offering, which makes you eligible as a self-employed borrower to purchase or refinance a home without requiring a tax return. If you want to learn more, get in touch with me. Email me. Jordy at JordyColladaShow.com to learn about the bank statement loan program offered by Angel Oak. Jordy at JordyColladaShow.com to learn more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Abear over at Abear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022 225-485-8022 Four eight five eight zero two two is where you can find A Bears Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. Go Chevrolet is proud to announce Go Express Auto Sales, the new used car lot located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at one fifteen twenty two Florida Boulevard. Go Express Auto Sales is online at goexpressautosales.com or you can search them on Facebook and social media at Go Express Auto Sales, the newest addition to the family of Go Chevrolet. Remember, Go Chevrolet is located down in Laplace, Louisiana, but now welcoming aboard Go Express, the new used car lot located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 11522 Florida Boulevard. Seven six five four three two one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother! Welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show live on this Monday morning presented by Go Chevrolet. Good conversation with Paul Maneri, former LSU head baseball coach Jay Johnson. Next LSU head baseball coach will be interviewed or excuse me, uh, introduced at uh, 430 this afternoon. 
over at the uh, Baseball Ops. Still undecided on the Jordy Collada show if we're going to carry that live here. We're on Lloyd time, so that may be about 420 whether or not we make the decision. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm definitely <laughs> yeah, late. That's right. <laughs> uh, remember, we're presented by Go Chevrolet. Speaking of uh, Cali, bro, my guy Mikey Romero, this swing this guy's got. Cali swag. I mean, dude, he looks like Ken Griffey Jr. Just easy, bro, plucking it into the air. He, uh, he made news last week as he's the number one shortstop in the state of California. Kid can rake and is a stud. He was committed to Arizona. Uh, As soon as Jay Johnson announced that he was coming to LSU, about 15 minutes later, Romero tweeted out, I'm coming to LSU. (laughs) People down here in Baton Rouge are fired up, man. Uh, And Mikey is joining us from California this morning here on the uh, the Jordy Collada Show. Good morning, man. How are you? Thank you for the time. Yeah, of course. Good morning. How are you guys? Doing good, man. <laughs> Doing real good. Uh, just waking up. Did we wake you up? I'm, I'm sorry. I know that it's, it's we're two out. You're two hours behind us over there. Oh yeah, no, I'm all good. I, uh, I'm usually an uh, early riser, so it's all good. Um, Jay Johnson, man. W- what do you know about Jay Johnson? Because we don't know a lot down here, but we're fired up to have him. Uh, obviously, as a part of LSU. Um, but the news uh, became even better last week after he was announced, and then you pledged. To uh, to LSU, um, what, what was it about Coach Johnson that 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 made you want to follow him? Um, so at the beginning of my recruitment, the biggest thing for me was to have a coach that just had my back and a coach that I could trust. And uh, Jay Johnson definitely had that. Uh, he's a player's coach. He's a fiery coach, and he's going to fight for you. And I really look for uh, a coach that's going to fight for me because. I want to be able to fight for my coach, and if my coach is going to uh, fight for me, then you know, there should be no reason why I can't give him my all. And Jay Johnson, just uh, you know, he's a fiery coach. Uh, he's a trustworthy coach, and uh, yeah, I mean, the trust factor there is just big. And uh, the biggest thing was the coach that had my back, and Jay Johnson has that. Was LSU ever on your radar? Say that again? Was LSU ever on your radar? I, I'm sure they recruited you, but 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 did you ever think about LSU before Coach Johnson got the job? Actually, yeah, like LSU, it was like Arizona and LSU, really pretty much. Wow. And uh, and uh, you know, Jay just Jay just really stuck out to me, and uh, you know, I, I fell in love with it. Uh, what has this process been like for you? I, I can imagine going through recruiting during COVID nineteen and being the type of prospect that you are, you may not have been uh, exposed as you may have been going through this process when, when, when normal circumstances were around. What, what has recruiting been like for you? Well, I mean, for me, I committed to Arizona uh, June 12th of my going into my freshman year summer. So I just wow. finished eighth grade and um, I, yeah, I just finished eighth grade. And then, you know, I've been committed. I mean, COVID just, COVID really hasn't played a role in my commitment. And then, you know, when, when Jay went over, I was like, I was like, you know, like, you know, it's, it's LSU, you know, baseball, we get much better than that. So, you know, they're getting a good coach. And, uh, you know, I just decided to follow him. Uh, have you been down to Baton Rouge? Have you ever been down here? Not yet, but, you know, we're planning on it real soon. Wait, wait, you said you got recruited out of your eighth grade year. How good was your seventh grade year? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I played on the 12 U national team for USA. In my, I think my sixth, it was sixth or seventh grade, but I mean, that's really all that led up to that. Uh, that is, was like the biggest thing I had done. Is there a? Um, I, I don't want to ask you this and, and put you in a spot because I know prospects like you at, at some point are probably going to have to make a choice, uh, just because you, you're so good. A major league team may 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 realize that. Um, is there an emphasis for you to go to college? Do you want the college experience? Uh, yeah, you know, definitely. You know, college is a big part of you know something that I want to experience. But you know, with with the MLB side, you know, I'll I'll wait for that time to come. But you know, right now I'm just excited to get down to Baton Rouge and play for the Tigers. You know, yeah, for sure. Jordan Thompson, I saw tweeted at you um, once you made the commitment, and, and he's a Cali kid. He had a really good freshman season. Um, what, what's your relationship like with him? Um, me and JT, we, uh, we played child ball together. I've known him since I was probably about 12 or 13 years old. 
um, we don't always just take ground balls to be in our practice or, you know, we're always in uh, check ice and pretty much every day. And, uh, and, yeah, I mean, me and JT have a great relationship. Uh, me and Zach Arnold, we uh, played in my high school league, and we played against each other. So I, I know both of those guys. So this feels like a little Derek Jeter, A-Rod situation. Once you get down to Baton Rouge, JT's got shortstop locked up right now. I'd imagine that he'll probably want to keep that spot. Both of you played a little third base. Uh, who's shortstop? Who's third base out of you two? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll just we'll just have to battle it out and see. <laughs> okay. uh, I think we can both play either position. We're both we're both just athletic. We can both play both positions. So we'll just have to wait and see. Are, are you, maybe two shortstops. Are you comfortable at third? I mean, are you are you comfortable on the on the left side of the infield anywhere? I mean, are, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I played I played third pretty much all last summer. Um, but yeah, I mean, left side, second base. Yeah, I'm, I, I can I can play it. What is um? What's your summer plans? Um. So, well, my high school season ran pretty late this year. Uh, we finished literally, I think, a week ago, and usually we'd be done at the beginning of the year. So, usually I would have gone to Arizona last week, but I didn't. And then, uh, a boy. In a couple of days, I'll be playing in San Diego. Uh, for a, for a pretty good tournament, and then uh, I'll fly out to Georgia. July uh, eighth, I believe, and then from Georgia, I'm going to uh, Florida for the national showcase for Perfect Game at Tropicana Field, and then um, after that, I have PDP, which is called it's Prospect Development Pipeline. It's by USA Baseball, and then um, Jesus. after that, I come home. Uh, they just announced that I made the All American Classic the Perfect Game. So I'll play in that game August twenty second, and then uh, and then after that, hopefully eighteen new trials for Team USA. Which, which no, ho- they know hopefully behind that, Mikey. Get ready for those eighteen new tryouts, yeah, big dog. Get drafted and turn them down and come to LSU. It's that's no right. big deal. That's right, man. That's a hell of a summer, bro. I mean, I'm excited. God, that is a great time in life, man. Uh, how cool is that, Mikey Romero joining us here? Uh, on the Jordy Collada show. Anybody at LSU you, you, you watch intently at, at the next level? DJ LeMayhew, Alex Bregman, anybody that, that, that catch your eye or anybody around the league that you watch? I mean, I'm in love with Tatis out in your neck of the woods. How, how, how do mm-hmm. you watch Major League Baseball? Is there anybody that you watch individually or is there a team that you follow? Um, well, I'm, a, I'm a Dodgers fan out here. Okay. Uh, you know, it's really either Padre, Dodger, or Angels. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Dodgers fan. I like Corey Seager. Uh, you know, I, I feel like there's some similarities in our game. But, um, I mean, yeah, Alex Craig, me is a stud. You know, I always enjoy watching him. I enjoy watching his high school clips. I enjoy watching him playing college. You know, the, the running play at the middle that he made in the college of the series. Yeah. You know, that was a legit play. And, uh, you know, he, he's fun to watch. I, I heard you. Uh, I heard you giggle a little bit when I brought up Tatis. What, what, what are the youngsters' feelings on, on Fernando Tatis Jr. out there in, in San Diego? For a guy like me who's just a fan of the game, uh, I, I love him. I, I love the flair that he plays with. I think he's a great talent for somebody like you that will obviously play at that level. Uh, what are your thoughts of a guy like Tatis who has a lot of personality and a lot of skill? Um, I think the crazy thing about Tatis is, you know. He's just a glimpse of the new generation of baseball. Um, a lot of the younger guys are, you know, really energetic, really fiery, just like him. And, you know, they're really good. Mm-hmm. And I think Tatis is really growing the, really growing the game of baseball. And um, I, I think he's, you know, setting a path for the new generation to come up, you know, and be energetic and, you know, just go hard. Yeah, man. He is, uh, he's fun to watch. Um, what's LSU's reputation out there? Because if there is anything – that, that Johnson has gotten just a little bit of pushback on, and I think it's people just kind of picking nits, they're just kind of nitpicking on him, is, is that he's a he's primarily a West Coast guy. He played out there, he coached out there, um, and, and, you know, this is SEC country where a lot of people are real prideful down here about the, the geography uh, of, of where you guys come from. What, what is the feeling around LSU baseball like out in California and out West? Um, when, you, when you hear about an LSU commit or you see an LSU commit, you kind of instantly know. You're just like, oh, he's, you know, he's a baller. You're going to LSU. You're going to play in front of 13,000 fans every game. 
And, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, when you hear LSU down in California, you just think of, you, you just think of, I think you think of Alice Fox Stadium, you think of 13,000 fans, you think of the reputation to, you know, playing the College World Series, and you just think of the winning tradition. Do you, do you play any other sports? Have you? Um, I mean, the most other, I mean, I played like flag football, but I mean, it's just really baseball for yeah. me. Uh, sounds like you've got to protect the um, kid. Dude. Do, Are you kidding me? Do you, do, do you pay attention to name, image, and likeness stuff? Like, like somebody like you, by the time you get on campus, um, you know, you'll probably be one of LSU's best players as a freshman, and, and there'll be businesses that'll probably want to align with you. Have you started to educate yourself on that type of stuff? Can you ask that question again? You actually cut out a little bit. The, the, the name, image, and likeness stuff that is coming to, to, oh. to, to college sports, have you started to, to pay any attention to that? Because I, I, by the time you get to a campus, by the time you get to LSU, You'll, you'll probably be one of the best players on the team as a freshman, and there'll be businesses that see that. Have you even started to look at that type of stuff? I haven't really? at all. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. interesting because uh, that is – I wonder for, for somebody like you, a high-end player, how, how much y'all pay attention to that type of stuff because by the time you get here, I mean, you'll be able to make money off of your name, you know I mean, by just – by the way that the rules are going – um, Mikey, I appreciate you uh, you getting up and sharing some time with us, man. Uh, have a great day. The, right, the, the, the city of Baton Rouge and the uh, the LSU fan base were fired up to see your name come across as a commit to LSU, and can't wait to watch you play, man. So, have a tremendous summer. That sounds awesome, bro. Thanks for uh, thanks for this morning. Thank you, thank you guys for having me. You got it, man. Thank you, uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, there is uh, Mikey Romero with a uh, a couple of minutes here. A nice uh, kid. With us on on the Jordan Why is he Colada such show. a grown up already? <laughs> because he's been doing this since he's been <laughs> yeah, in eighth grade. He's an adult. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he's been thinking about this moment since he's been in eighth grade, and um, he's he's probably known that this type of attention comes with it. And I mean, what a summer! Oh what goodness. a summer to be seventeen years old and on a. On a and he's probably that's that's, a, that's not teams; those are organizations. No, they're calling him right. to go. He's yeah. not calling to ask right. if he can play. They're right. like, "Where's I mean, Mikey at?" This weekend we're here. Next weekend we're there. Then we're going here, and we're playing for all of this in front of these people, with these teammates and these coaches and these equipment providers. He might not make it to campus. I don't. It didn't sound like it was. A he slam dunk. It, well, yeah, man. I mean, when he was so he played on the twelve U national team, uh-huh. twelve, and, which is twelve years old. Yeah, so I mean, he was either <laughs> he was either eleven or twelve, so uh-huh. it was like sixth or seventh grade. And uh, I miss mean, little Jay next year. He had he had yeah. seventeen hits, thirteen RBIs, a bomb, a stolen base, and he batted uh, five fifteen. <laughs> So. How about Arizona? We'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then they you lost wanna, You want to go to Arizona? <laughs> Jay Johnson's like, that might have been what got him hired. It's like, I got this Mikey Romero in my back pocket <laughs> yeah, to LSU. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's a shortstop. Well, I mean, I bet, I, I'm sure Scott Woodward was like, do you think that you can recruit California? Or you think you can recruit the West Coast at LSU? He I know an like, 11-year-old that he hit was probably, 550. <laughs> he was probably like, hey, Scott, you mind if I make a call real quick in our interview? No, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you, you ever heard of a guy uh, by the name of uh, Mikey Romero? Scott was probably like, nah, who's that? <laughs> uh, he's the number one shortstop in California. In America. Hey, Mikey, how are you? I'm sitting here with LSU's AD. I'm about to get the job. If I take it, will you come with me? Hell yeah. Go Tigers. Perfect. Thank you. Talk to you in a minute. <laughs> that's that's EAUX, <laughs> yeah, by the that's way. Right. All right, send that that's tweet exactly out. We're right. good. That's right. <laughs> so are you saying that he might not come to campus? He might go pro instead? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like a draftable yeah, guy, man. He might go pro right after out of oh. high school. Um, he's stud. put together. He's a stud. I mean, he sounds like a stud. He looks like a stud. He I felt mean, like a stud. He did. He feels like a stud. That was way um, too easy for him to do. As a, what? How old is he? Sixteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. That would be seventeen. He's going yeah, 17, into his senior 17. year of high school. Oh, yeah, yeah, seventeen. You know, he's I mean, eighteen. U. So eighteen under. Yeah. I mean, that was way too smooth of an interview. That was. Those California kids are so intimidating, dude. I don't get it. I can't <laughs> right. put a thumb on them. Like Louisiana <laughs> kids are different. But well, they just got no worries. They've though. got nothing to worry about. Silly. They don't even know. He's like, oh, I mean, I might be here. I yeah. might be, you know, whatever. Nah, I'm gonna go bro, just we're going to hop yeah, on the plane. Right, I've been up, man. Uh, <laughs> Vince, yeah, what does that even mean? Vince, I'm an early riser. Vince Palazzo <laughs> says uh, Mikey's parents need a GoFundMe to pay for his summer. Hey, Vinny. They ain't paying for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't paying for a. They ain't paying a nickel. Uh, um, <laughs> Tati's watch your back. Yeah, that's right, man. <laughs> All right, uh, that was good stuff. Ran a little long today, but uh, appreciate Mikey Romero. Remember, I'm telling you, you want to join us tomorrow morning. Darius Days is going to be here. Some uh, Hopefully some good news coming for LSU basketball. D-Days will be in the house uh, at some point here. I believe 815 
uh, he will be here on the uh, on the Jordy Collada show. Uh, and uh, we will recap Jay Johnson's introductory press conference uh, this afternoon over at uh, LSU Baseball Ops. Uh, we possibly will have a presence. Probably not. Probably not. We can't commit. We can't commit just yet. You can't commit just yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I'll see you all there. I'll just be staying in there. Nobody there. Like, what the hell is that girl doing? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, hey, get in touch with Randall Nachman and Nevadas if they can help you out with a mobile web design or a, a custom app, a custom web design. Uh, they're doing it for us, and uh, they do fantastic work. We, we put out some of the images uh, that are coming a couple of weeks ago, and the, uh, the feedback's been tremendous. Uh, if they can help you out, find out for yourself. Nevadas uh, online uh, at uh, nevadas.com. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Remember, Darius Days will be here tomorrow. Tell everybody. Uh, Jordy Collada shows on YouTube, Facebook, and JordyColladaShow.com, and driven daily by Ghost Chevrolet. For Katie, Noah, and Lizzie, I'm Jordy Collada. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning.